Preemptive apologies to. Oh, I got a second. Hold on, I got to <laughs> observe the fist distance. Uh, preemptive apologies to everybody that's uh, listening right now. I, 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 this is this is a sort of a, a a parental warning. We did just have a bunch of downforce, so this podcast might get out of hand. <laughs> There's gonna be some grandiose claims. <laughs> nothing, nothing out of the usual. Though. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, back to regular programming for us. Episode sixty nine. <laughs> Check the uh, comments below for the recipe, the downforce recipe. <clears throat> You're definitely going to want to drink some at home. Yeah. yeah, Very <laughs> tasty, actually. Yeah. Two parts Heineken, one part Red Bull. Very we'll, simple. We'll, we'll release a video on that later. Oh, pour quickly to release the foam. <laughs> Two fingers worth. Guys, Flat of Fever podcast. We're back. That's what we are. Bingo, bango. Yeah. Uh, and we are here uh, on a Monday right now. Jesus. Looking forward to the upcoming Hungarian Grub Break. 4.20 p.m. Yeah, right around 4.20. Wink, 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 yeah. wink. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. Uh, hey, let's, hey, hey, hey. Let's, let's get right to it. Danny, let's what do you got? Let's talk about the Hungaroring. I did, how, is, <laughs> how is that pronounced? Honestly, because I feel like I've been <laughs> yeah. saying it wrong my entire life. But it's... But I've heard it's it. Hungaro Hungaro ring. Hungaro ring. It's Hungaro Ring. It's Hungaro Ring. was just some weird guy. We just watched Hungaro the, uh, you know, the uh, Inside Grand Prix show they put out every week. Mm. The, yeah, the, the host, the narrator, he kept saying the Hungaro Ring. Like that. It's just not like, sound right. Really enforcing, <laughs> like, emphasizing the roar like a lion. <laughs> that, that, that can't be right. Come on. No. Let's, Maybe let's it's like a, almost like, a, like when you're really hungry and your stomach's... Hunger it, roaring. Hunger roaring. Ooh, I like that. It's been weird not having like a race every weekend. Right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like something was missing in my life. I was like, I, wasn't there like something going on this week? It was a much needed uh, rest though. Yeah. I keep saying it. I like the two week breaks. You but need it, a but week in between. Sometimes the having like the marathon, like race after race after race is so good. I mean, you it does yeah, drain yeah, you a little bit, but yeah, yeah. even, even as a fan. One week off. <laughs> Even as a fan, it can drain you. Yeah. So I couldn't even imagine those guys. I think, like looking at all these track news constantly, that it's going to be back to eighteen next year. I think. So. Oh yeah, but eighteen races. So we'll yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll expand on find that out, later. Yeah, we'll find out. I guess towards the end of the season. Ecclestone yeah. wheeling and dealing. That's what he does. <laughs> or the lack thereof. That's what he makes the big. <laughs> the big. If he gets big more money from less tracks, he doesn't man. give a shit. He just needs more money from less circuits. It's all the same to him. God damn it. Pockets a, keep getting fatter. Kind of fucking asinine logic. Just, <laughs> it does not, it's not sustainable. He's bragging about not having an email address and all this shit. Come on. <laughs> well, he might not have a, an email address, but he, he certainly has, like, Sorry, an assistant that, like, has an email. And, like, it's basically, like, emailing her is, like, emailing <laughs> Bernie. Yeah. yeah like, it's, just, like, it's it's not like he doesn't have contact to the email world. He has to. Jeez, he's, he's running. And then, like, freaking he gets the emails from company. her and then he responds with, like, a, like a pigeon courier. No, no, no. See, she, what, what she, like, it's, it's a very specific role to, like, be Bernie's assistant because you have to, like, know old calligraphy. Because after, after, <laughs> after reading the email, you have to transcribe it right. in old D English with, like, the E's at the end, you know, and, like, put the like put it in a scroll and deliver it to him <laughs> and then afterwards you have to sacrifice a goat yeah <laughs> be written and drink with, its blood only with a quill yeah <laughs> uh, the, the quill of a phoenix that has long been extinct okay anyway so sorry. No, just hungarian grand prix always an exciting time of the sorry. year what's going on mike sorry I have to plug in my phone. I have to play Pokemon Go later. <laughs> <laughs> Can you like mute the notifications? No, no, no. It's um, it's the plugging in sound. I plugged it in. And oh, I got it was one like... of those shitty USB cords that only lasted five minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks <laughs> you're plugging it in or not. But the Hungarian group, I'm looking forward to it. It's Monaco without the walls or whatever. They always say. That's what they always <laughs> it's say. So dumb. It's like it's not everybody. Like every single track, like or like most tracks, like they 
they, they have like a thing that they repeat about them. You know how like in yeah. spa they say, oh, you know, where it can rain in one side of spa and not <laughs> yeah. the other. And then for the Hungarian, yeah, it's always like, it's like Monaco without, without the, the walls. walls. Come on. No. It's like a street circuit without the houses. No. <laughs> <laughs> They say that every year, man, and it's not. It's like, look at it. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not at all. It's pretty flowy. <laughs> it's mm. a way faster than Monaco. I can't see, like, I mean, there's maybe one corner that's sharper than 90 degrees, but that's like a, it's it's a racetrack corner. Like, there's the two 180s at the right. end there. Yeah. The two 180s. There. The, yeah. the second last U corner you go in, like, first, let's get, let's first gear. Yeah, Watch but it's, it's, it's not like a hairpin, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, not, exa- yeah, not okay. exactly a hairpin. You have an interesting opinion on this track because before, um, you, we were talking about some good things about Silverstone and you were like, oh, if I was given a chance to drive one track, I'd yeah, yeah. Silverstone. Like, like I was saying to you, like before, I, at, uh, when, before we went to Montreal, I, yeah. I set up my, my PlayStation to do a few laps to get, get myself all yeah. e- extra excited. And then I've been, since then, like driving the other the other the the ones coming up to Hungary but yeah last week I drove Silverstone a few times I don't know it's super exciting it's fun but what you're saying is you're pro no (laughs) definitely not pro but just giving myself an idea I don't know this this course is badass it's 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 not as fun or as long a lap as Silverstone but it's more of a challenge I think for sure so it's a harder circuit to get around. I was watching. Uh, um, yeah, uh, know, it's for me. It'd be. A, I'd have to debate. Uh, guess, which sorry? Which way are they going here? This way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. This one's clockwise. Yeah. Like most of them, yeah. I guess. Wouldn't oh, that just be that's, in that's the front to the your perspective? No. No. Clockwise. Well, is if from you look the, from I, underground, I, it's counter. Right. Yeah, if you look for yeah, nobody. You, looks you know the reptiles <laughs> that live underneath. <laughs> yeah. Are, are reptile overlords? Yeah. Well, they they have like heat vision, so they can just see all the cars. Just oh, is that how they watch it? The yeah. races? Oh, yeah. Man, they're, they're missing so much. The, the forest, top of the, the cars. forest part in the middle. Yeah. yeah there, there's <laughs> underground there, yeah. tunnels. Sure. Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, but I I agree with you, man. This is a fantastic track, and I I was actually. You know, Formula One, uh, their dot com, like the Bernie side, their the little effort that they're putting out, they have at least been trying. You they have, yeah. That. There's some cool stuff there now. Yeah, and they put a, a little track preview, or actually a couple track preview videos for this track, and one of them was like sort of the history, and uh, I think it, it it showed like a few people that uh, they interviewed him on their f- on the first on the very first mm. uh, Grand Prix, 1986. 86. Yeah, they were born. Yeah been running since then but yeah there's been a lot of drivers made the first yeah. well one, one the of the guys races like, and first wins even without drive i guess like they they interviewed him like before the race mm-hmm. uh the first, before the first race happened and he was like he was basically like yeah like you you're driving around this track and like you like at the end of the grand prix you're gonna know that you just did a grand prix like it's like it's that demanding it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah they're just high g corners yeah. also the first hungarian i'm a quarter hungarian by the way quarter oh, my blood look at quarter that. my grandma was born there um, the first Hungarian in F1 raced his first race here. The first Czechoslovakian, also another quarter oh, of my wow. blood. The first Czechoslovakian in F1 raced his first race here. Started in 86 because Bernie wanted to race in the USSR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't make that happen. I think he was pushing that Monaco race we talked about before then. Couldn't make it happen. And then uh, just... Well, he knew he knew, he knew, he knew, he knew he wanted a race in the Soviet world. Yeah, so he caught. Uh, he, yeah. he the closest he could get was inside the Iron Curtain. He had some no. kind of business friend, uh, <laughs> some sort of Hungarian business friend. Remember our buddy from from, uh, um, he was one of like the first like committed uh, listeners slash watchers uh, from from uh, Bulgaria that told us that actually what well, where it was what was supposed to happen is that the first race the first race behind the Iron Curtain was supposed to be in like a few different places or like there were like a few different places sort of up for grabs and one of them was actually in bulgaria and they had like most of the track built or whatever but before they ran out into money problems uh and then basically it ended up it it was a race in between this place uh, in bulgaria and the hungarian and the people in in hungary just managed to build the track faster and say like look 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 birdie it's ready it's ready it's ready (laughs) but that other track in bulgaria if you like drive by the little town you can see like the main structure of the track still there Ah, Uh, yeah we showed pictures of this uh on our preview show for the hungarian grand prix last year 
Um, I, I forgot exactly where it was, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you remember mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty cool to see, but it, yeah, it was it was sort of like a the next frontier back then. It was to get international motorsport to break the the Iron Curtain, and and Cold War. Next. We knew, like the, they knew, Bernie Bernie knew that there was a ton of demand for Formula One in that part of the world, being between like the West Germans and uh, sorry. East Germans, everybody the likes East fast Germans cars, and, and 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 yeah, and everybody, yeah. The uh, the point that uh, Buddy uh, Hunger Roaring <laughs> pointed out was uh, at the at the time at the time that they held the first race there, everyone was driving around in two stroke vehicles, with small engines, yeah, like Soviet Ladas and stuff like that. <clears throat> so yeah, I just I just looked up the the first Hungarian Formula One driver and only he scored one point in twenty races. Name was Zolt Baumgartner. Mm-hmm. So uh, he raced for Jordan and Minardi, Ooh. and the Czechoslovakian Jay. had three races and no points. Uh, so I guess that was a bit of a publicity stunt. I sorry, guy, but Thomas Engia. Mm-hmm. Cool, much, much cool race, driver. man. I think that both uh, in the two thousands, right up there with the Canadian Grand Prix. Uh, it's been a race that has consistently produced really good racing, even in years when there wasn't much good racing overall i think the hungarian grand prix like brought like i don't know just something about the cars like maybe some maybe maybe the combination of those um like of those tight corners the fact that it's like it's it's kind of stop and go in some places not necessarily like you, you, the, the 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 power differential doesn't have to be that big mm-hmm. last year it was basically the the only like super race that we had. I, I don't. I don't know if you remember yeah, that. I yeah, do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Last year we were we were freaking raving about how great it had been, <laughs> yeah, and then crazy. no other race basically compared to it for the rest of the year. This you know? year it has the whole priest the whole eight nine races so far to live up to. <laughs> true. True. Except for except for Baku, I guess. But uh, Baku wasn't that great. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, no I, man. Like everything. Ha- everything that hadn't happened up until this point last year happened last year during this race let's uh this was the race when um hamilton ended up in the gravel Mm -hmm. they both mercedes like after like while having like a very dominating season they ended up like fifth and sixth or something like that let me see where where they um where they ended up they did bounce right back from that yeah actually actually right sixth and eighth right now is is, uh the longest drought for the the team of having another one two, yeah, which I think is like three races in a row or something. <laughs> it's the longest ever drought not pulling a one two. Oh wow, yeah. kind of crazy. But yeah, de- definitely Red Bull and Ferrari pulling right up behind uh, Mercedes. And this is a track where the power doesn't count as much because it's really short straights, lots of corners. Yeah. So you need the uh, downforce. The and, downforce. Uh, yeah, the, just the flowiness. And in 2015, Vettel won last year. Mm-hmm. 2014, Ricardo won. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah, like, that just go- so the Red Bull. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, actually, never mind. That, that was silly to say. Yeah, well, Ferrari and Red Bull. Yeah. The last two years. Well, that's, and, and, and that's what I mean, man. Last year uh ferrari won after or uh, vettel won um after ferrari qualified first and second and actually since that race till now Mm -hmm. ferrari has only won once by this point in the year after the hungarian grand prix last year we were talking about the ferrari resurgence Mm. we were talking about how how James Allison had been doing such a great effort, and this was such a this was a transition period, right? Because last year is when James Allison got to the team, but <clears throat> some of the design philosophy had still lingered from the year before. So people were like, "Oh my God! Like, look at how good they're doing now. What are they gonna do next year?" Right now, we're approaching the Hungarian Grand Prix, and Ferrari is freaking. No- it's there they, they were high hopes. Yeah, I had high hopes. I'm yeah. a, I'm a Ferrari fan. Yeah. I, and, and I said, the, I repeated the, the, the chant that everybody seemed to have had at mm-hmm. the beginning of the year. Oh, this is going to be the first fully uh, James Allison spec car. Like, how are they going to do? They're going to they're gonna do so well, et cetera, et cetera. And right now, nothing, man. 
well like what's going on ferrari yeah. like this if anything like this this is a chance that they have to like maybe redeem their names because they know that it's not gonna be like such a power hungry circuit so maybe mercedes won't be they're throwing around all kinds of news and weird rumors and stuff like the last couple weeks about don't worry, like the, this this week uh don't worry, our target is still mercedes not red bull <laughs> that they think they can only maybe beat red bull this year and not mercedes they're like no no we haven't changed focus but the week before yeah they said uh we're in such dire situation right now that we're looking at our 2018 program already. Oh my god! <coughs> pushing ahead of next year. Like well, maybe already thinking about writing off 2017 and just testing some stuff oh, out for the year. Ser- Sergio Marchione would be co- would be quick to tell you that you know whereas they're focusing on 2017 and 2018 from now, this does not mean that they've dropped their 2016 program. And then this morning, coming out of last weekend, uh, anyone that watched the race, you probably saw. The interview that uh, Brundle got with Ross Braun in exchange for driving his car. Right. But uh, in, in the interview, he said, oh, you know, like, I'm really not looking forward to that. Like, if if, the, if some kind of uh, the right situation came along, I might look at coming into F1, maybe mm-hmm. consultancy, something like that. But that he didn't want the 24-7 flying all over the world lifestyle. That wife, his wife would kill him or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But this morning, it came out that uh, Ferrari's asked him to come on as a consultant but uh, no answer nothing about it no quotes from him or anything but they're looking outside the team for for some other guys right? but you can see that like some kind his... of help anything is organize like he's the kind of guy that was known for his yeah organizing and like putting a solid plan into a team and making it happen he's like he, he was like the the ultimate uh engineer manager yeah. That's 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 because he started. He was an engineer at heart, and he actually like did was responsible for some of the design philosophy in in the cars that uh, um, you know that 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 he like you know helped uh, build. Uh, so it was him, but he also had that uh, like that thing that is is not very common for an engineer, especially to like have the charisma and like you know that 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 that. that People very, rallying like, personality, like he's, very measured way of the way the way he speaks, and he's very oh no, yeah, to the he, point, yeah, and very technical, but he speaks very slow and purposefully. And he's had that that he has like that like people thing that maybe you can't you don't see with um it's just in a, in his face he looks like a very trustworthy like a, he's a nice guy like he's not gonna yell at you he probably will though <laughs> yeah he probably no yeah if, if, if he cross if you don't do your job like he probably like has like that mentality that like. He's like thinking numbers like, OK, this person failed to perform by this much. We can't allow any, <laughs> anything below that. You're sacked. <laughs> like as simple as that. <laughs> like no hard yeah. feelings, man. Like we can still go for a beer later, but you're yeah. fired. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. Yeah. Uh, good. I mean, and, th- and that was the thing. As soon as he retired, people were hounding him with questions of like, oh, come on. You know, you're like, come on. You know, you're going to come back to F1 like mm. that. Are, and that at the beginning. Like, for the first year, pretty much, he was like, no, no, not a chance, I'm done, like, no way, no, no. And now he's kind of changing his tune. He's kind of saying, like, all right, well, in the right conditions. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably got, he's semi-retired, I assume, probably got some of his other businesses taking care of themselves, under yeah. control, calm down. Mm. Yes. Starting to get bored at home. Yeah, what, probably some of that. Twiddling his thumbs. Like, well, look, oh, it, what do? He was kicking around in his garage a couple, well, I guess probably a month or two ago, yeah. and thought, like, you know what? This would be the right time to get my old car running again. Brought it to the hill climb. Called some people up. Yeah, he called up a bunch of guys. I thought you, I thought you were going to talk about, like, oh, he's just in his garage, you know, craft <laughs> brewing. <laughs> <laughs> his garage isn't like my garage. He's got a fucking like an acre sized garage full of, full of race cars and stuff <laughs> that's a lot of craft beer <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bespoke automobiles but seriously man like ferrari what the shit i think they have they have an opportunity to at least like sort of you know come out of this year with like their head up high if they do like if they make a splash they've had in this like track. just so many like half of it's been on the drivers i feel and then the other and like Another half is on circumstance, and the other half is just like whatever's wrong with their car. That's what well, it seems to me. And Ferrari, like you, you, like you rightly pointed it. Uh, I don't remember if it was like last episode or a couple episodes back. Mm. They do like you, you. You follow Ferrari, and and you do get the feeling that no matter how many people they like, they change like in terms of tech, of, um, of team principle, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, they, it there's something that 
still like has you believing that man these people some of the decisions some of the like some of the strategy calls mm -hmm. they're just like they're either rushing or like they're mm -hmm. not thinking it through or maybe they're overthinking it right you know they've, yeah they've definitely had some of that in race mm -hmm. this season yeah just bad calls and and last season and like i just remember like that was like yeah. that was like it, that was what caused fernando alonso the championship in 2012 like it, it, it's etc etc like it's at one point you have to wonder man like Maybe you do need like a cold, calculated, like no emotion, yeah, uh, d like person to make the decision. Exactly, I was just gonna yeah, say. Yeah, Arriva Ben is a very emotional type yeah. of guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, see him, uh, yeah, he shaking gets, his he gets, fists. And he gets fired up. He for sure. a cigarette right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's up with Ferrari. But uh, yeah, like, like, I want them to win. Like, I, like it's it's weird uh, coming into Formula One the way I did. Yeah. Is that like I'm a fan of every team. I just want exciting racing. That's right. at, at the end of the day, that's what it's really about. If the Mercedes win, if the Ferraris, if the Red Bull win, whoever it doesn't matter. But right. as long as it's exciting, I mean, a Ferrari has made it exciting by fucking up. Yeah. Right. Because you're like, oh, what did you do that for, yeah. you donkey? Yeah. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah. All right. So we we just had the test well, we'll talk about soon but the test this week the mid-season test and um most of the super power tracks for this for the season are out of the way so it's gonna be sort of like a balance i guess the teams are they gonna focus on pushing this the is, arrow for this, this season what, and this when do they what? switch to next season's focus right and i don't know why like, like nobody has caught on cut like caught kind of uh, like in, in in the paddock but this is what Red Bull designed their cars to do. Yeah, they're like Downforce. they're like yeah they don't push they the, don't push like, the G's yeah. down into the road. Yeah, they know that the first half of the season is gonna have some tracks that are not gonna favor them at all. Yeah, but then the second half, the yeah, it's gonna have tracks. like cars like uh, tracks like this, like Singapore, like, like tracks where it's gonna matter, like the, mm. the high downforce, the slow speed yeah. racing. And it, I don't know whether he was supposed to or not. I didn't see his face when he said it, but Vettel's quote from this past week that. It, like we know they made some rear suspension changes and stuff a couple of weeks ago yeah and he said yeah this isn't working for us somehow we're not getting the energy into the tires it's not working for us so whether they just say like what we messed up and <laughs> blah, run that to, yeah, blah, run that till the end of the season yeah or, and focus on next year is a hundred percent almost different car it's like 90 percent new different stuff different it's, philosophies it's always it. like difficult too because like formula one is one of these sports that has so many moving parts to it mm -hmm. and uh like for instance obviously the the qualifying at the beginning of the season was you know very strange and foreign to a lot of people and like oh my god we're outraged and then there's a new tire strategy this year uh there's always something minor but can have such a big effect yeah like uh in on how a team approaches a race and how the how the they decide to do that like red bull's always been so smart and being like looking forward to like okay what what is going to favor us yeah. in, in the end and that's yeah. why I, I like them it's hard to get behind them because it's a fucking energy drink yeah you, you know what i mean it's like i get it like you're yeah. fast by definition but you know that's about it it's funny not like it's <clears throat> I, I've, I don't know i've always been just been cheering for vettel when he was back there mm -hmm. and i'm just like like i want the team to do well you know yeah. as a team whatever whatever but now they got like two young emotional drivers especially yeah. verstappen and oh then it seems like danny rick like raised his emotion game in oh, the past man. month or so <laughs> like started by, like oh these guys need to give me a break what, yeah what happened or else i'm quitting and then he signed for three more years and then like he went to new york and didn't talk to any of his uh his colleagues for three or four days that he turned his phone off or whatever. there's nothing you can say there's nothing help. i could say yeah, like looking help. back i don't know i don't know how i'm gonna feel in five years if i could forget about it then <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shut <laughs> some shit like that yeah my uh like inner conspiracy theorist <laughs> says like someone's like you know it's not bad if you were to explode, right? Okay. Uh, stay with me. It, it's not bad if you explode because, like, this will generate some headlines. This will get some traction going. Mm. This will, this will, you know, put the news out there or, or whatever. Because, like, people love that. That's why people watch WWE. That's exactly why they watch. Uh, the they don't drama. watch it for the sport. No. You know, these it's are, a soap opera for men. That's it's what it's always been. It's men. been called. My grandfather was so into that his whole life from the time I was born <laughs> to the time he died. He watched not he watched the wwf he was so oh, the old school and, and, one. To, and into the wwe but yeah he was and to him you could not tell him it wasn't real mm. didn't matter that was his <laughs> that was his it's real to me yeah 
<laughs> exactly that. But, but a big this is a soap opera for men. Yeah, it's the drama of it. Yeah, Formula One. That's a Vince big McMahon part is of a it. genius man. Huge, yeah. huge part huge of it. Drama. Can you imagine if the WWE bought Formula One? The drama <laughs> they could I inject. I don't think they have. I want to see. I want to see like <laughs> no, Stone Cold Steve Austin in a Formula One car. <laughs> <laughs> Just like crushing beers, dry, <laughs> yeah. driving. Car. It's like what's what was what was your lap time? Three sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, like that's really okay, bad. Uh, can I ask you guys yeah. this then? Um, was Formula One always kind of like this? Like what? In terms of like the the drama between yeah. the teams? Oh, and oh yeah, even more. Really? That's why people were complaining that we didn't have like with we, that we now don't have enough uh, enough characters because it used to be a drama up and down, like really? all like all over drama, really? drama, drama, drama really? all day. <laughs> I watched the video the other day that I, I, I don't know if I came across on YouTube or on Reddit. I don't mm-hmm. remember, but it's a picture of, or a video of James Hunt and uh, he was ra- racing against somebody at Monaco. Or whatever they, they were like two laps, like neck and neck, mm-hmm. fighting each other. One of them bumped the jump, bumped Hunt into the wall, and then so he gets out of his car, pissed off, and starts screaming. And the marshals are trying to grab him and like, like get over the wall. It's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Like you get to get away from the car and stuff. He's like, like fighting the guy, almost punched now, the get guy the in the fuck face. Off me. Yeah, and he waited a whole lap until the guy that bumped him off came back. Sorry, I forget who it was, but he's <laughs> shaking his fist at the guy, he's, shaking yeah! him. And then he, the, the marshal's still trying to like pull him back. He shakes the guy off and runs across the track to the other side and climbed <laughs> over the fence, and walked back to the pit. So it was a crazy, yeah. They used to yeah, go they, back, go for a cigarette. Yeah, they used to. They used to be crazy guys, now. and like that's that's why like the the movie that that. <laughs> The movies that have been made about like like sort of the drama of Formula One, yeah, Rush, Grand Prix, for yeah. example, are like from like back in those days, those days because it was like super fun boy and back then, right? Now and, and like for these a while, there, playboys, right? Well, yeah, but 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 in, in, and it was like there had to be have been something, man. This had to have played a part in like bringing out like that sort of like those sort of personalities out. The mm-hmm. fact that 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 danger and like the chance of death was like real right i mean it's not like it's not real anymore but it's being sanitized yeah it's 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 like all the way over there is the possibility of death whereas back in the day it was always with you it was like you didn't know if you were gonna finish the race that that was just what what it was so so why not nikki lauda that's why rush is a badass movie yeah so Mm -hmm. so why not be flamboyant why not like treat every day like it was your last why not like you know, tell somebody to fuck off on TV. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, look, right. look, at, look at Senna, how emotional he was. He mm. he believed that God yeah. was driving him. God God had pushed him to win, and that was his will. And wow, yeah. he wow. was. Oh no, his driving yeah. for him was like a, 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 like like a, a spiritual, spiritual thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. I, I've said since it came, since Rush came out, they. I really hope that they make it a part two. You do a whole separate story about the Pras Senna thing, maybe in. 20 years I could do another and maybe like <laughs> Hamilton Rosberg movie. Oh, I want to see Rush 3. <laughs> do you think that's why like people don't like Rosberg is because like he doesn't he doesn't symbolize that sort of archetype of the Formula 1 driver. He's so like ideal he's, like his his sort of personality is like, you know, very calculated. He's super uh, reserved and very a lot reserved. of the time, most of the time, yeah. He, oh, but he, like, he rarely he, gets emotional. He's always like does that yeah yeah, yeah. and then oh, does brilliant. like an interview in five something. different languages or whatever he does <laughs> yeah which is still very impressive uh, you, but... you're not gonna ask me a question okay how was the grand prix okay the grand prix was like yeah what a no it's because he's a prick man mm-hmm. like you can see like yeah I, yeah I mean i don't know the guy personally but i've seen enough of his interviews and i like i've like you can tell like like yeah buddies like when he's yeah. being nice Half the time is he's faking it, yeah. Right, and like, it's like a favor to you. Yeah, yeah. He's being nice. Yeah, and 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 when like you, you, you like his person, his actual like real personality, where you can like see like oh he's a person. Yeah, it's like when he's like angry and like it all like almost invariably turns into like him being a douchebag. So and, yeah, and we we've seen this season. We've been talking about it yeah. since I don't know, like just a few races into the season. He's launched like this. Uh, YouTube channel where he does the post race mm. selfie videos oh and God. like you say in three four languages and like he's, he's definitely seen like Hamilton's beating him on the social media side and the oh, yeah. the friendly side and winning fan side and stuff mm. like that he's doing these videos we've seen him got professionally photographed pictures that he's throwing on his Instagram and Twitter stuff that 
he's hired like a photographer to be like, look what I'm doing on the weekend. Yeah. Stuff like that. To just build his own. You definitely need like that sort of he's personality because forcing people to like him almost. Well, like because like <laughs> Formula One is a team based sport, but it's also yeah. like it's very like individual. A, it's a person. pyramid team, right? Yeah, like the guy on the top is yeah. like he's like your spokesperson, right? Mm -hmm. He's like not your captain per se, but he's like that guy up top. You want him to represent you. Yeah. And while like you know, Nico Rosberg is a great driver, obviously. <laughs> But you got Lewis Hamilton over here, and he's just like hilarious to watch because he's yeah. going to do something yeah, so he's cool. He's a rock star or, all the time. He's a rock star, which is great. But yeah. this is kind of like the reason why I can't get into Williams. Uh, is because they don't have a star guy. Yeah. Both Bottas and um, uh, Massa. Massa, they're incredibly forgettable. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, like, I look at him, I'm like, God, you guys are boring. <laughs> next, you, next, you haven't, you next. haven't been watching as long. Like Massa's been around for a long time. Yeah, okay. Like, especially when he was younger, and he's had some big stories, like Hungary, yeah. where he took a spring to the face. Ooh, he, was, wow. he was knocked unconscious. That was he had a big crash. This is one of the even pushes for the arrow screen over the halo. Was a halo couldn't stop a screen. Yeah. But the, this spring hit him in the face, knocked him unconscious. He crashed the car. <clears throat> he, he actually didn't race for like a little bit. Yeah, that's like all. He, like he a came back for the last. Yeah, that's that's apparently like I guess he would have been okay if he was just a regular dude working at the office. But taking the G forces of F one, they put a titanium plate in the, over his left eye, oh my so God. that his his skull would be strong enough, I guess. To I mean, he's closer than any of us to becoming a cyborg. Yeah, so <laughs> can't yeah. really fault him for that. I think he also one of the main parts of the reasons for taking away the refueling in F one because. Yeah. I remember watching this on VHS, like yeah. him, dr excuse me, driving down the pit lane with a gas hose, gas hose just spray spraying fuel all over the pit, and like a big plume of smoke and fire. Wait, that was him? <clears throat> well, he 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 had one of those bad accidents. Oh, that, no. that wasn't just him. I mean, I'm sure like that happened a lot. Yeah, that happened a few times. I don't. I guess we can't show it on YouTube because we'll get pulled down. But see if you can find it just for yourself to, yeah. to look at. Also, look like at, like massive fuel hose. You'll, as you'll a, as a consequence of his uh, spring accident and the Hungarian ring. Uh, 2009 is that drivers have that extra piece of carbon fiber on top of the visor like so if you look at uh, the helmet right, yeah. it has like a like an extra Almost piece like on a top proof type of thing yeah it was bec it was to prevent like accidents like that from happening and he, he was he's, with renault at the time <clears throat> no he was with uh ferrari yeah i think it was oh. a ferrari pretty yeah, sure yeah, yeah pretty sure it was the maybe the first night race oh it was yeah sorry the and uh even him like we, we talked about the, this is from six hours but before the show today Massa's posting stuff like this oh man making he's fun being, of his other teams yeah. trying to vote he wants to keep his seat he's i think being, for another year he's right? being pushing memes like yeah like if you can't see the video this is a picture of the mana car being compared to one of those african mini buses they don't have public transit in lots of africa so they have these he, buses and it's painted the same he's he's come uh on, come on you oh know but villains villains killing it in that he, he also like is, uh, he was the one that, that first posted like the <laughs> sorry uh, guys, like, that picture it, comparing the halo to like it was the top part of a flip flop to like the, the <laughs> yeah. flip flop wire yeah, that was the, that was massive the toe Twitter. groove yeah I mean that's still pretty <laughs> clever I'll, like I'll give yeah. him that yeah, yeah. sure I already have, cleverness has got like a very significant <laughs> portion of my heart <laughs> uh. Oh but yeah, it, it, it looks like maybe Van Dorn might get Massa's seat next year or Button. It's kind of going between the two of them. The, Van Dorn stepping himself up. Really? What did he say? The past, he said, I think it was this this past week that he he needs a seat like 2017. Oh no, yeah, it he must be his that year. Yeah, he said since, it's yeah. got to be his year because he's like, I worked my way up, you know, I won the, these championships, but then Formula Three and he's, and he's getting he's, into his mid 20s, so he must be worried about that that too. Apparently. Julian Palmer, yeah, is the only driver on the grid that started after his twenty fourth birthday now, except for like the classic, the older drivers who, mm -hmm. before this, young driver thing started happening. But it's like this has to be his year. Yeah. He's he's already driven a Grand Prix. He's proven it. He did some testing last yeah, so week. He got a point. He got the first point for yeah. for McLaren in a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, this this is why the the talks been going around about whether or not Button's gonna stay or whether he might. There's two options, I guess. They they farm out Van Dorn for one year to a lower team to get some experience, mm -hmm. or they just say but, we're, we're done with Button. But who lower team? McLaren doesn't have that kind of pull anymore. They don't have like a team that they share an engine with. They don't have a team. Like they they're in a very isolated position. McLaren has 
fuck themselves over. Like their mm-hmm. their situation right now, and like is a consequence of many wrong decisions down the line. Like their 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 position yeah. on the grid. I don't know but why yeah, you would really go like Harianto's seat. I don't, like why would they? No, let them? because they don't have. You they can't, don't have. It's not the same type of car to drive. No, Harianto's seat like is spoken for by somebody from Mercedes, you, and you know that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Same with like. There's uh, like so, Alexander Rossi is more likely probably to yeah. even get that seat. No, oh, okay. You won the the Indianapolis 500, That's right, right yeah. <laughs> um, and he was in Toronto last weekend, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh shit, yeah. Uh, yeah, this past weekend. Yeah, this past weekend. The Honda Indy. Yeah. yeah. But but seriously, I think, if anything, like it would be Button to Williams, Van Dorn to McLaren. Unless yeah, somebody that, comes and snatches him. That's the main talk. McLaren. For sure. That's the main talk, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But yeah, Van Dorn, like, going publicly probably on his own accord saying i need this seat like this has to be oh, yeah. now mm. yeah you know what i mean yeah that's his chip for negotiation i think i i kind of like it's sort of like boosting his chances for this seat too He's, he made yeah. a big thing this week about uh how the mclaren feels like a different car from when he drove it even yeah in in that the race this year right because he was at the young 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 per- well mm. he, he was the young person for mclaren at one point yeah <clears throat> yeah Alon- alonso did some laps too yeah i don't think button did any for testing did he I don't know. No. I'm not sure. No, he wasn't there. Going into this weekend, though, to the Hungaro ring, another thing is going to hopefully make this race badass again. It's being repaved. You, can you pull up the top link there? If you're right on the top. But I think I'm almost certain that the entire... It's hard to find any info on this. There's a there's a picture of the chicane there. But I think the entire circuit this is has... really, really potato quality, Dan. Yeah, that's the, the only <laughs> picture I can find. There's there's two pictures and they're both that small, sorry. <laughs> but I think the entire circuit has been repaved <laughs> and that the curbs, most if not all of the curbs have been totally reprofiled. So we looked at some video of 86 in this and they had these like three, four inch wide sausage curbs. <laughs> and then from last year, like modern racing, the last five to 10 years, they've had the, the fat sausage curbs with the... Half meter right, wide right, right, You're going right, to love this question, Danny. Where would you put some baguettes around here? <laughs> <laughs> Near the dip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just to make sure. But actually, people don't often like gain an advantage with this track uh, from leaving the track. Not yeah, really. I don't think. Maybe that chicane. They're going to put some fat, but, uh, fat, fat curbs there. But yeah, nobody knows. Uh, so P- Pirelli made a, a statement about this circuit because they sent their engineers there to go see. And what they've said, and as you can see in this picture... Compared to even the old pavement, which you can see some on the inside of that corner there, it's dark. Mm. So it's new, these new. these circuits really do, and so so the race we had in in Austria was also just repaved. Yeah, the circuit was repaved. But what they did there, and what Pirelli doesn't know yet, if they did here, was they went out and power washed the whole circuit. Because when you put new asphalt, oil comes yeah, out. Yeah, the get, oil. Yeah, you get mm. like bitumen and yeah. heavy oils on floating to the top. Oh shit. And, and that's not good for grip. Tradi- <laughs> traditionally, that. another, you know, like the sport only rains on half the spot and it's Monaco without the. Yeah. Well, another thing they always say about this track is that it doesn't really get used for anything else throughout the year except oh, this really? F1 race. And look at the outside, it's all dusty around there. It's, yep. it's kind of hot yeah. in Budapest and it gets just dust blows around. So the circuit usually evolves a lot. Yeah. So now it's going to even more. They probably didn't power wash it like, like Austria did. Mm. And it's going to be covered in dust, and it's all new, and all the curbs are new. Yeah, but listen, okay. So, so you're saying crashes, and <laughs> and they've chosen a very dark asphalt. Yeah, and, and also I was going to say it's pretty dark. Also, the stones apparently, according to Pirelli's engineers, extremely aggressive for grip. So high temperatures for one, nice. because it's a very dark, mm-hmm. dark thing. So high degradation and very grippy, grippy new surface. It's- which also will probably have a lot of oil coming out of it, Wicked. a lot of dust on it, all kinds of variables. I love it. I love so, it. I, I, right? Like, doesn't it make you excited about this track already? But so, okay, he, here's the on. thing, though. Before, no, before you move on yeah. from, from the resurfacing. I was going to continue with it. Okay, no, okay, continue. Thing, continue, continue. You were going to move on from it? No, no, before, before. <laughs> okay, so I think WEC has raced on this surface before F1 has, the, this picture's from a while ago, they went two seconds faster than the WEC record. The record for Formula One for this circuit was a 119 for Schumacher, 2004. Yeah. Most of the records are from 2004. Last year, Hamilton did a 122, right? Yeah. So they're, they're expecting probably two to three seconds faster than that. Jeez. 
Jeez, what about next year? Seven seconds? <laughs> yeah, like, no, it's gonna be crazy. So, <laughs> the, the circuit owners are hoping for yeah, let's let's kill the time, and uh, yeah, the, the, it's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, so there was a seventy laps of madness. It's actually scheduled uh, actually for this year. WC or no the twenty oh, never, mind, never mind the WC race already happened right Back, no, never mind the one forty six one was the record all wrong never mind <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes there was a one thousand kilometers of the Hungarian ring that uh, is happening in fourteen September jeez I don't know actually never mind <laughs> if somebody knows let us know okay yeah that yeah. might be a, some kind yeah, of national yeah, yeah, race yeah, or yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's so it, it, yeah the, the actual Thousand kilometers of uh, the Hungarian ring is happening for T September, but it's not, it's not, uh, it's 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 uh, it's something called the Le Mans series. It's not WEC, prefer, uh, but it's it's endurance racing anyway. Okay, so yeah. well, anyways, whatever. Yeah, at least it's a WTC. Uh, <laughs> that up. No, it's called the 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 yeah the Le Mans the European Le Mans series. Anyways, it's going to be a, a badass weekend, badass circuit, fully repaved, oh, brand new curbs. The World between. Touring Car Championship happened there already. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, so that, that did happen in whatever the fourth month is. What is that, April? <laughs> yeah, 23rd yeah. and 24th of April. But it's it's not this, it, it wouldn't have been the new, the new surface anyway. Okay. Good. But, okay, so he, here's, here's, here's the question that I had for you. Mm-hmm. Uh you know okay anthony davidson he said for the last uh, uh yeah for, um where were we? okay so he, he was basically saying that when they redid uh all of silverstone or whatever mm-hmm. or uh yeah, whatever like what, recently with the new the new pits uh, the new pit no the, no like when, when they resurfaced okay. uh, the track they got rid of some of the bumps oh, he's like yeah. oh like you know, like sometimes, like you kind of want the bumps because the bumps like can you know help you like gain some advantage or like you know it's where a lot of like the action and strategy happens. If you know where they are, for sure. If you know Whoever where knows they them are, better yet. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So something like this on a on a, on a track like the Hungarian ring that would have had uh, quite a bit of bumps. It's it, it's a trade off for sure because you're gonna see people taking some lines. Or you know at least some risks down some corners that maybe they wouldn't have dared before because they know that it's gonna be per- perfectly flat, which is gonna be cool mm-hmm. to see. Yeah. But at the same time, the track is gonna be have fresh tarmac, so it it is gonna be slippery. And like who knows? They haven't raced here yet. We're gonna see in the first practice. But what I was saying before, we were watching some onboard clips and stuff, just looking at the circuit. Almost every corner is cambered in. Mm-hmm. So this leaves it open for them to. Reprofile the corners in or, in or out too. Who knows if they did that? True. Yeah, we'll see. I'm excited. I, I love this track. No, it should be good, man. And okay, it will be. It's gonna be <laughs> badass. I don't know if Ferrari's gonna be up there, or whatever. But I predict a Red Bull Mercedes Mercedes battle. Well, you know, you know that the, the Sky Boys will be quick to tell you that Sky. this. This is a Lewis Hamilton track. <laughs> they say that for about every, like for about half everyone. the tracks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, you know, this is a Lewis track. Lewis well, Hamilton. You know, he track. loves it, right? Yeah, oh, <laughs> he he loves this track more than any other driver and, loves any other track. And he loves coming here every year. The best the, fans. The, the fans are so great. Yeah, you know, Budapest, you know, downtown, so much to do. Roman spas, <laughs> Roman spas to enjoy. <laughs> Hot springs. I don't. Th- I think that they're actually gonna be like, you know, Total Wolf. Like, I think one one of the recent articles had him saying something like, "Oh, you know, like the threat from Red Bull is real." He might like, you know, you can't blame the guy for saying that because clearly, look at, yeah, look something. at what happened last year. Like yeah. they were, they it were, is real. Yeah. They're on a resurgence. Well, I think just Max Verstappen being so prominent, yeah, right? That. And this is a track that could actually, like, like we said it already, but it could suit Red Bull very, very well. Mm-hmm. And it seems like they're doing well with the engines, and better than Renault themselves. <laughs> That's because it's a tag hoy, though. <laughs> it's got that extra Swiss precision in it, <laughs> <laughs> that extra couple of, like watch gears in it. Speaking of Max Verstappen, you see what he bought this week? What he bought with his father's permission? 
Only with his father's permission, though. Hookers? He bought a GT3 RS Porsche for 400 grand. What? <laughs> yeah, he bought a $400,000 car to celebrate his uh, Red Bull promotion. Oh, nice. Good for him. But his father said, you know, Max is still a young man. He's very responsible on the public roads. He, uh, he definitely got my permission for a big purchase like this and his oh, management, of course. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Max, you know, Porsche GT3s are dangerous. You don't want to injure yourself during this Grand Prix season. <laughs> I'll be responsible. They're, they're like Porsches, though. They're, they're known for fish stealing a lot, right? Yeah, they got a big, <laughs> big fat rear engine. A big booty. <laughs> Actually, yeah, do a quick search for this. Porsche GT3 crash. I bet, I bet you see a GT3 lot. GT3 RS. Yeah. Don't forget the uh, GT3, GT3 RS crash. Oh. Porch. Oh. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, you don't you don't want to crash one of these cars because oh, totaled, totaled. You're not gonna get be able to fix it. Oh, let's just look at the images. Yeah, images. Yeah. Oh, those are some expensive accidents. Yeah. I wonder what color he got. Well, good luck, Max. Yeah, post some pictures, oh, Max. Orange. Red Bull colors. It's gonna be orange. Orange. Oh orange. yeah. Orange, yeah, right? Be, mm-hmm. for, for, because you know because Dutch. the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have an orange Dutch. Our sports league captain is. Like his background is Dutch, oh, yeah, and he's like, "No, our color is gonna be orange." And like, I was like, "No, it's not. It's not gonna be orange." He's <laughs> like, the, he, "He was, he, I'm German and he, he's Dutch, so it's like, no, let's just like, let's change it like to neither of our colors." Yeah, that, okay. <laughs> we went with like, green. Yeah, <laughs> British, British green, dark. Sports, yeah, sports yeah. Color. We're called the Muffin Men. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyways. So you got some testing results there from Silverstone? Wait, hang on a second. That can't be all we have to say about the Hungarian ring and, hung- and Hungary. Jeez. The Hungar roaring. The Hungar roaring. <laughs> the one of my blood countries I've never been to yet. Yeah. I've been to Czechoslovakia. Oh, I know. Been well, to well, England. I, I guess the obligatory been thing that we Germany. have to say is that it was last year it was the first race that uh, that, that was competed after uh, Zubiaki actually died. He actually died this this week. This week, last year, one year ago. Oh yeah. my God! That's yeah. why his that's why his picture's up today. Yeah, that's all. You know, remembering you, Jewel. I have a signature. Hashtag JB twenty seven. Really? Yeah, I have. Uh, he, uh, I got him to sign a, a Ferrari shirt for me a couple of years back <laughs> in Montreal. Oh, uh-huh. that's great. Uh-huh. That's crazy. <laughs> and, uh, do you see that? I don't know. I wish I, I should have. I didn't save it. There was a picture though from I think it was not maybe the F three race this weekend of. Some sort of car moving, like some sort of backhoe on the circuit during the race. Oh, man. During the week when Jill Bianchi oh died from God. that. Like, come on. A lot like the drivers in the race were posting, like, why the fuck are we racing with this kind of equipment on the circuit? <laughs> it's not supposed to happen anymore. That's bad. That was a Zandvoort, though. I mean, I'm sure like it wasn't like F1 great stuff. So maybe they no, just didn't yeah, get the memos. They're going fast in open wheel cars. Like... It's kind of not cool. It's not cool. Absolutely. Um, okay, let's let's just 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 for you know uh, speculative fun. Mm-hmm. Let's let's speculate now on the form of the of the main teams going into the Hungarian ring. Started from like the the, the lower Bottom. tier. So. Oh, can we talk about Haas? Okay, let's talk about Haas. Uh, only because, like, I think I was watching some sort of uh, video. They've been kind of for, quiet. For, for, yeah, they've been very quiet. They be, they were really exciting at the very beginning. Yeah. While things were sort of up in the air, right? right. We had, like, the weird qualifying. We had, like, some strange races, some rain that yeah. no one expected, some uh, did not finishes. And that just ended up in, like, they got some good placements. And everyone's like, yeah, oh, wow, they're looking really good. And then I remember what we are talking about it. We're like, I don't know. This seems like too good to be true. Yeah. And now clearly this is what we've sort of seen. And then with also like them and like Renault, right? Yeah. They're both sort of in the same position. You um, know, I thought Grosjean is in 10th place in the drivers, in the driver's standings. Oh, really? Let's yeah, he's ahead of Nico Hulkenberg. He's ahead of both McLarens. He's way ahead of Gutierrez with zero points driving yeah. the same car. His, uh, his St- Steve Gutierrez. <laughs> Steve Gutierrez, what are you doing down there? Esteban. Yeah, he's Como estas? That's, that's pretty great, actually. I kind of take that. But, I mean, the, collectively, the whole team is still pretty not, low. Not, yeah. that, not and, that high up. And who knows like, if they're actually going to 
score any more points throughout the year. Yeah, look at him, man. Gutierrez is not coming back. I think Haas yeah. has probably gone full 2017 secretly or whatever. They they would have to. There would be no sense investing that what? much time and money into. At the, <coughs> at the same time, though, keeping Grosjean in the top, if they can keep him in yeah. the tenth spot to yeah. the end of the season, yeah. that's going to be the, that's killer gonna be, for them. That's going to be a big, 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 big game. chunk if of change. Even a tenth place, yeah. if they can keep him there, yeah. What do you think their strengths are? Remember at the beginning of the year, we were talking about how they seemed like they were uh, good at. Uh, maybe figuring out and staying on top of their tires, their tire mm-hmm. management. Yeah. But just looking back on it, like that could have just been, um, sure luck or, or, or Grosjean. That could have been mm-hmm. like just Grosjean in a car that like mm-hmm. was maybe more competitive than like they expected. And with a bit of good luck, he managed to like do that and, and just driving right. it. But for a few races like there, he was like always complaining about like just something they did, mm. and this is yeah something they changed something, and he didn't like it. He wasn't liking driving the car. He he, he was saying like oh, you know what like it doesn't feels like it's all over the place. <sighs> They're also like they wouldn't they, they will never publicly admit this, but they have been affected by some Ferrari engine issues mm. as well mm-hmm. as as the main team Ferrari. So like who knows man i think it's gonna be i don't think it's gonna be the easiest thing in the world for them to stay uh, on top of like this year especially if actually it does make more sense for them to like switch to a seven to, to a 2017 program right but, but i think it does make a lot of sense to, for them to fight to keep grosjean in number 10 mm-hmm. and they're eighth in the constructor standings they're eighth place four points behind mclaren 28 to 32 four points behind mclaren they were Str- like very strong chance it's only half mm. the season to beat mclaren yeah there's gonna be big news if haas comes in and beats the honda yeah that's the true. honda powered mclaren yet yeah. toro rosso is at 41 points so they're they're like 13 ahead it might be harder that, for them to catch up mm. i doubt they will and toro rosso would dump money to keep them behind anyway oh, well, Fred, yeah, yeah for sure yeah uh, kivyev <laughs> has just sort of gone spiraled out of control oh man he's, he's so done yeah, okay, yeah, so so that's Tor, uh, that's Haas. Uh yeah. their their outlook for the race, I think yeah, I think that they've they're probably going to come back come to this race with like Monaco spec stuff. Okay. Uh like just if if they have like any like, you know, they're they're high down, high down for shit. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not going to I don't have I don't, a Ferrari I don't, engine. The Ferrari like okay. current Ferrari. Current Ferrari. Current wow. Ferrari, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I guess depends on like maybe like if they get a bit of luck and if they get a bit of push from uh, a new like spec Ferrari engine. Mm-hmm. If they like get their their strategy right, they they're gonna be fighting for points, mm-hmm. both of them for sure. Uh, but not much more than like you know l- low midfield points. Yeah. Um, so, Toro Rosso, what do you what, what do you think of that? They they've had a strong chassis, and this is gonna be a circuit for uh, all about the chassis. Yeah, they're gonna do good. I think McLaren will do well this <laughs> this week too. Their chassis is super strong. The, that's true. There's, that has come a out. Yeah. Chance for them to really shine actually this weekend. Right, and with a with a not so power hungry track, they might just, actually they might actually beat the Haas. B- mm. Before we jump up again, just Renault, MRT, and Sauber have six one and zero points, so Ooh. nothing even really to say much no. about them. Yeah, Haas is up next up with twenty eight from six behind them. Oh wow! So Ren- Renault for sure. Look, look at the same engine as Red Bull with one hundred ninety eight points. Which is actually only six behind Ferrari. Mm. For the constructors, that's huge, man. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh six yeah. points. Like a, a one two gives you forty three points. Mm-hmm. It's huge, man. There's I think I think Red Bull is gonna come out ahead of Ferrari this season. Yeah, they I might think so. Oh they're, they're they catching will. up for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, to- no Toro Rosso will do well. It's gonna be like a Toro Rosso McLaren Haas battle, maybe a Force India. Force in- no, Force India is like, those four teams already are really eye- close. It's already eyeing the the Williams, the Williams yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, one yeah I think and if it's due to VJ's absence you think he uh, pushed or, the or his party resurgence because he was at the last race was he not yeah yeah this is the only race he's allowed to <laughs> he's uh, <laughs> facing extradition he's lost his passport all that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but uh, 
yeah i don't know maybe he's like pushing the team party too much and stuff with that mohawk and drinks behind him yeah look, guys, look at all this free booze i brought <laughs> <laughs> this is this has been surprising me a yeah, lot right yeah with for their and this is what everybody's been saying that for their resources and for the amount of like, like the, for the problems really that you could say you could argue that that they've had like they are actually i hate to like repeat this because you know the sky boys go on and on about this but they're mm -hmm. punching above their weight they they have way less money than the Williams. Their facilities maybe are not as great as Williams. Mm -hmm. And they're right there, man. They're, yeah. They are like a cup, like a victory and like a Williams fuck up away. Like in that from, fourth from India. That fourth, fourth spot. Sw switch back to the driver's uh, How do you think they're going to do specifically again? at the Hungarian ring though, for India? Because they have the Mercedes engine and they have an okay car, but yeah, hasn't been developed. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think they've pretty much switched to next year. Yeah. Openly. Yeah, look at just looking at their teammate man teammates what happened to Hulkenberg? oh yeah 26 points the only platinum licensed driver that was touted at the start of the season the only platinum license holding driver 21 points behind perez perez is representing himself in mexico now, here's one thing though i i remember hearing this from like remember last year when we talked to the uh Ben and whoever, like the the guys from the Five Lights podcast, yeah, like yep. where are they now? Where are you guys now? Uh, anyway, so but I remember like hearing from, I guess the guy that we talked to, or one of them, that they he listened to like one of the races with the radio commentary, like just like the the commentary channel on. Mm -hmm. and I've never done that actually myself. Yeah, that must be very interesting, right? <laughs> uh, Maybe not as interesting anymore. Yeah, a few more curses. True, words. that's the thing, but. He he did. I remember like one thing that that I remember like hearing from him was that you'd be surprised at the amount of uh, radio communication back and forth and like like just asking like questions to the pit that Hulkenberg has. Really? Yeah. Like he he like I remember like him saying that that like he, if you listen to like the or if you were to have listened to some of the races mm -hmm. back in the day yeah. where like there was like more more of the radio freedom, you could see that Hulkenberg was like like one of the ones that was hungry for the information for the information and stuff and like maybe maybe he's being affected by by the radio ban mm -hmm. negatively that's i never heard that before <clears throat> remember from i think it was baku no they are they all starting to blend together slightly yeah, right. the radio messages and stuff but remember the, he's kind of like seemed like he was bitching out oh, remember yeah. the last race he's like oh i'm gonna fly on my tire <laughs> yeah. you, wanted, you wanted to come in you wanted yeah. to quit because of yeah. that yeah <laughs> He then I guess I guess he stayed out another lap or two, but yeah, maybe I never heard that argument before that he's that reliant on the radio. Yeah, maybe he maybe he, maybe he was a little bit too much. Maybe like mm. the cutting weight is getting to him. Mm. Maybe like he's just getting complacent. Maybe he's had a bit a bit of bad luck. Uh, I I haven't found his driving to be too spectacular this year. He's definitely being overshadowed by Sergio Perez. The the weight Sergio Perez, the weight thing like, compared to Sergio just because he's like four or five inches taller yeah he's just a six footer guy yeah sergio's like a regular height guy yeah their, their weight for sure could affect yeah, them right could affect them. just not having like fats in your body and stuff yeah it screws yeah. up your brain yeah having to like just cut down on so much of the food that you might have liked mm -hmm. yeah anyway it's yeah he, it seems like he's he's not in the greatest of places yeah. But right now, I hope that he comes back. I hope that like he puts he puts a, a good performance. In. Lots of German fans show up to the Hungarian ring. Right. Uh, yeah, that makes so. sense. I don't know. I've never really cheered for him. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I think I th I've always thought that he was being like a good driver. Yeah, but I don't know. I, yeah, I never really cheered for him that much. So Williams. Well, yeah, Williams. What do you what do you what do you think about them? Do you think that they're gonna be able to do something good, or are they like just chucking this one off and like focusing on like Monza and the other power hungry ones? But yeah, they, it's hard to say with with, with Williams. Yeah, like see, when it, maybe they switch their focus too because they're looking at maybe switching out Massa. But this is sort they of might start looking at next year and like Red Bull Ferrari stories come up like they're gonna be fourth yeah, place again. Like yeah. they gotta really next year get that third. They got they, the constructors they, there. They're also they're, like asking, like scratching, like there's some head scratching and like some questions, some hard questions on, like mm -hmm. Claire Williams like looked happier when the when the season started, uh, like all smiles and like now like when they cut to her like she's serious. she looks tired and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're 106 points behind Red Bull, Jeez. so yeah, they might have just like cut it for this year again. Because, yeah. Like again, like they might get rid of Massa, they might get Butt in, mm -hmm. just focus on next year. They're not going to fall behind Force India. Like I think they have enough power to keep ahead for the season. 
But like you look at, there's a hundred six from Williams to Red Bull, mm. and then Red Bull to Ferrari is six. So there's an extra hundred deficit from third to fourth, from third to fourth, then from second to third. Wow. So it's it's huge. But Mercedes is killing everything right at the top with three hundred thirty five points. Well, okay, but no, okay. So now before that, yeah, the Red Bull and Ferrari battle. Now here's here's an interesting. It's question. It's going to be interesting this weekend. Yeah. yeah. You what see the think? reliability of the Ferrari. What do you think is going to happen with them? Too? I think Red Bull is going to kill it. I think they're super prepared. They're I gonna, think so, this, too. This actually. weekend, the yeah. car's tuned for this. This track is theirs. Mm. Uh, Ferrari's been doing nothing but complaining about themselves. Danny Rick. To is, nobody, basically. To the, and and apparently, like they've gone back to their, like, their old ways of lying. Ferrari? Well, they they used to be known for, like to like just straight out lie to the media until they oh, had no. like enough enough like information or like or enough um until they had like some good news to give they just right. lie about everything. Right. Was, right. no, no, a Rackle Stone quote from last week that the spaghetti culture is back there the team is too Italian again something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think Red Bull has like sort of the young energy uh in like that that idea is like very strong in them and like they have a lot of yeah. momentum they were they, known when they came to f1 before they started to like win championship after championship they were known for that they were known for like the youthful team the party team yeah they like they <laughs> you, you walk right by the red bull and you always hear like the bass loud stereo loud. blasting out the, out the yeah. whole paddock yeah i believe that well i, I mean like in terms of like in the, for this year alone i mean that Christian, change they made with uh kvyat in in um um, Verstappen. Verstappen. Yeah. That changed everything. Like yeah. the whole tone of the team. Yeah. And now that he's actually doing really well. Oh yeah. Like that last they race. They I made think, a like, good I choice, man. I think they gave just the team a four hundred thousand dollar car for himself. One hundred. And, and it, it gave the team like maybe like a renewed mm-hmm. sense of confidence that they needed because at mm-hmm. the at the beginning of the year they started with their heads low. Yeah. Remember, like they were they weren't smiling a lot. But yeah. people. Ted was uh, Ted Kravitz used to say that, you know. You would walk by the Red Bull uh, garage, and it was always a party. But at the beginning of the year, it Christian was, it Horner is like married a, to a Spice Girl. Yeah, no, but like remember <laughs> at the beginning of the year, he said like you now you walk by Red Bull, and it feels like a funeral. Like yeah, it's but now they're 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 back, and they they've gotten some confidence, which is yeah, hell yeah. I think next year is gonna be theirs. Going, it's going like full arrow next year, full arrow side. If they can, especially if they can convince. Onui to come work as some magic again. Oh yeah, he just got some practice with that super whatever the fuck Jaguar thing that they put together. Was that Jaguar or some Aston? Aston Martin? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Another British car. It's maker. a supercar, but I don't know. Not that interested. It's just a. Oh, so it's a hypercar. Hypercar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a one to one, right? Yeah, with the weight. That's, weight that's a mega car. Mega car. No. It's or, not, no it's oh, hypercar. sorry, sorry. It's, it's a uh, hypercar territory. The mega car. Sorry, just just to clarify. Because Con- Conic Segs was he called it a mega the first mega car because it made one megawatt of horsepower thirteen seventy six or something crazy. Right. Hypercar, hypercar, <laughs> hypercar. <laughs> mega car is the next territory. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think they got that going for them. I think that's yeah. yeah I I I, yeah. I, yeah. And I Ferraris would... had so many blunders and and little fuck ups both on the on on the team side and the driver side, and Raikkonen is just boring. At. A good driver, but uh, he's like one of these guys. You see him in interviews, like I fucking hate this. I want to go home. Like yeah. that's and that's, that's not fun to watch. That's like the media argument for why or they why do they keep him? Yeah, just he's you're not gonna probably get somebody worse. Yeah, he's already know like and next year is all fresh fresh slate anyways. Yeah, he if he cannot, I really th- think like I don't understand like if he doesn't give a shit in interviews yeah. in the press conferences in talking on the radio or whatever like he probably does not care if he's not winning mm-hmm. like, like we just said he had he's having like a, a building a family now he's having a five hundred thousand dollar wedding yeah like he doesn't probably give that much of a shit about this racing to if you go if you look at him hard and do you think what he's thinking yeah like come on you why why the fuck would you keep that guy yeah. is he really giving that good of input back to the team Unless Vettel is just like keep him on being number one, whatever, whatever. Is, that number, number one, one, number two thing. Vettel, Vettel. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Four-time world champion trumps one-time world champion. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, that, uh, that that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, 
I know these things work better <laughs> if 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 I had a a different opinion to you guys, and but it it pains me to say like yeah I I see it I see it going toward to Red Bull. Mm-hmm. I I think Ferrari is well. It's we we come to this resolution yeah. based on observation. Yeah. Right, uh, just sort of how things have unfolded throughout the year and yeah. how momentum has changed and uh, the ups and downs, sort of, and of Formula One. You see, and you see it in Vettel's reaction too. Yeah. You, uh, I just, you know, while preparing for for this episode, I was reading like through some of like the uh, what Vettel said uh, in, in the uh, post race interview when he mm-hmm. won uh, the Hungarian race last year. Yeah, and he was like. Like I just remember, like reading it, like I remember, like how he was like a like a passionate Vettel again. Like, yeah. Uh, it was almost like he, towards the end of his Red Bull career, like mm-hmm. especially uh, 2014 when he was uh, out, uh, beaten fair and square by Daniel Ricciardo. Mm-hmm. He was like sad. He was somber. Like you could like he he didn't have like the joy of life. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like he he just didn't mm-hmm. have any of the zest that he had before. Right. Uh, and he he. He kind of lost that. He was grumpy Vettel. Yeah. Then he moved to Ferrari, mm-hmm. and he like he then he was hopeful Vettel, and at the end of this race, like then he was like happy Vettel again, and like yeah. <laughs> he was like you know he was like I dedicate this race to like Jules Bianchi, but like you know whatever ho- you know like looking forward and like clearly like feeling like he was back in his groove. Yeah. Uh, but then this year, like as as the season has progressed and Ferrari has failed to deliver for him. Mm. He's kind of like starting to like turn to like grumpy Vettel again. Like, yeah, he's he, like, oh, okay, hold on. Oh, fuck. Can I <laughs> some of these guys? That's supposed to be the deal yeah. with Ferrari. Yeah. If you're a star driver yeah. and you get poached by Ferrari, that, that was supposed to be the deal. That's, you yeah. know, everybody that's, thinks of. That's what people want. Like, well, when you're a kid, you're like, I want to drive for Ferrari. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, it, and it was supposed to happen. For him, the way that, the same way that for that, that Alonso thought that it was supposed to happen for himself as well, mm. that you go to Ferrari and and the same thing that happened with Michael Schumacher would happen to you. You stay with them for like a couple seasons, like not necessarily like like being up there, mm. but you stay with them for the long run because eventually, like after like the third year or whatever, mm. you start like like you start winning races again and you start like competing for championships and they right. give you a good car. They didn't happen with Alonso. Yeah. It's not looking any better with Vettel so far. Let's be honest. Mm. What now? So, sort of like as like uh, an aside to that. Yeah. Um, why? Why is it that he left Red Bull to join Ferrari? Oh, Danny, take it away. Money. Is, money. Okay. And this is money. Ferrari, just and the, Ferrari. the prestige. Yeah. Right. Just like, and at that time, he's he had already won four championships. Yeah. yeah. Wow. With the same team. With the and same team. He, with, he with came up. Bull. He came up through the junior ranks with Red Bull as well. He oh, really? Yeah. In a way, yeah. He was yeah. he he was like Williams test driver for a bit. Like he kind of ditched uh, Red Bull for a little bit because uh, he thought that Williams was gonna give him a chance, and they gave him like a couple testing days. Mm-hmm. But then he went back to Red Bull. Oh, okay. Uh, to the Red Bull program. Now, it it also coincided with a time when now he was getting beaten. By Daniel Ricciardo, mm. the new young gun, right? And people were starting to wonder if the naysayers of Vettel back in the day were right, because they, like even when he was winning his, you know, for his four championships in a row, mm-hmm. people were like basically like saying like, "Yeah, so what? You're not winning. It's Adrian Newey, the guy that made the car. He's winning. You're not winning. You can you can you haven't proven a single time that you can fight for for the win from the back. You haven't. He's like he's, the, the argument was like, put him in a different car and let's see how he does. Right. And his brilliance and like the fact that he's like uh, uh, like one of the best drivers in Formula One. Like it's I'll, I'll never argue against that. Mm-hmm. But like there's been some races since he left um, Red, Red Bull. Bull and even in his last year at mm-hmm. Red Bull. Where like you like you you kind of like it made you wonder like like yeah. it, it, when we started to like fanatically like follow F one like during the Vettel years yeah like we, like you basically like all the time you were like man this guy like is he even human like is yeah. he like he because he made no mistakes right he like he was like always like he started the races and some the races Red like. Bull- the Red Bull qualifying strategy was go out in the last minute of Q3 and do Just one lap. Smoke everyone. <laughs> he always did that. Go to the, but, like, by, by, by halfway race distance, he'd be like, 
half a minute ahead. Like it was, it was not even a comparison. Wow. He was so far ahead. So, but people were saying like, you know what? Maybe like you're just really, really good at driving that car under those conditions with that amount of uh, of downforce. But for four actually, years in a row. Yeah, but if <laughs> yeah, but if you had to like do something else, yeah, maybe like maybe luck won't go your way. And like I'm, I hate to say it, but it's it's kind of showing that. Right and and oh uh, well, but that's how, that's that like I would argue against that because clearly Ferrari has made some questionable <laughs> decisions in how they decide to run their team. Yeah, but yeah. and then as, as a consequence of those questionable decisions, mm. now you, Vettel you have looks Vettel, bad. Yeah, Vettel looks bad, and he's actually like like maybe he just gets. It's and it's and it. You he can, is the smallest ego problem in the whole paddock. Oh, remember? Right, right. Yeah. I, forgot, I forgot about that. I forgot that he doesn't let things get to him. Yeah. So let's tie this back to Hungary. Um, here's from uh, Wikipedia: 2007, July 31st, Vettel did his first race for Toro Rosso in 2007 at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Oh shit! And then he finished out the season for them. He took over from Scott Speed, and then he, 2008 he took over. Thing was Scott Speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was American too. So like, yeah. can you imagine Scott Speed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, so he took over, drove 2008 for them, and then moved up to wow. uh, Red Bull for five years. Nice won, won his uh, uh, the first race for Toro Rosso back in the day. Wow. But 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 that was like a Toro Rosso. That was like by and large like the same car, the same chassis as the Red Bull ish. Let's finish up this points biz with Mercedes. Whoa, whoa, I'm whoa. about to pee my pants here. But, so if you look at this, Mercedes now is 300. So we look at third and second and third place. Ferrari and Red Bull are separated by six points in the constructors. And you jump up to Mercedes has 335 points. Man. 131 above Ferrari. So if you look at it this way, we just had 10 races. We're halfway through the season. Yep. If you pull a 1-2, mm. you can make 43 points. So of a possible... 430 points if your team pulled a one two in every race this season you could have made 430 constructors points up till now if mercedes has 335 that's 78 percent of their possible domination 78 oh percent not the not the total points because it goes all the way down but 78 percent of possible points up till now they've they've locked them down and that's with those two guys fucking crashing into each other and yeah. causing all kinds of problems. Yeah, they don't need much more than that. They're they're killing everything. So I'm gonna pee. I'm gonna pee myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, go for it. Like emergency. I'd be happy if coming out of this weekend we see a Red Bull win, like a one, like another, like another Red Bull win. Maybe. What was, last, what was the last race they won? I mean, they have they, they won any races this year? Well, like first place? For Stappen, right? Remember, he won the, the Spanish Grand Prix. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Oh, that was the one where they the Mercedes knocked each other out. Ah, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. That's a, it, a little convenient. It's, it's a bit of a flavored win. Yeah, it's a flavored sure. win, but it's still a win. <laughs> yeah. It's it's insane still that like these dominations like from like one team has has it been that always one team is the dom dominating team? Ah. Uh, not always, but it does happen frequently enough mm. in Formula One. Um, it, it's, you know what? This this is actually quite a heated topic because mm. some people will tell you it's always like that, right? And and it has to be like that because um, it's because uh, someone's going to be in that position exactly. And right. it's Formula One, not Indy, not like GP two, right? It, the constructors are actually different and some but sometimes like they can be vastly different and a lot of the times that difference is in the competitive advantage right so if you extrapolate that argument to like the full consequence of what that means it does mean that there is going to be one team that's going to have find like an advantage here or there right and it's going to be dominant now the way that it's been expressed in a lot of the history of formula one is that there has been a lot of years, especially in recent history, where it's been one team clearly at the top, mm -hmm. and then some challengers that like may like win here and there. Mm. Now, but at the same time, in recent history, we've also had some seasons where it's been incredibly close to for like two or three constructors. Ah, cool. Right, uh, which which makes which actually does make things a lot better. Like when you have several people right at the top fighting. 
it does make it does make a difference for sure it does um, now, now <clears throat> sorry to uh, quick tangent on that yeah. point um now those years that it was closer did you did you do you feel you enjoyed those seasons a bit more or in maybe in a different way Maybe in a different way, but this season has been kick-ass already. Yeah, the season's yeah. been crazy. It's p- for me, personally, yeah, like, cool for me, yeah, here's a picture of every winner, every every car, championship winning car, all the way back. But yeah, if for me, like, I don't know, I don't get really, f- I don't fully get all the talk about, like, um, like, the dominance ruins the sport and all this, like... Yeah, that's part of the race, but the camera's not watching that the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, you look at the re- the whole grid, like we're talking about right now. I, I like, just, I like to look a, at everything. Like, it's maybe an, the cars. an like, intricacy the, of the of the sport itself. I think or for any me, sport, because like now that I think about it, most sports usually have you. You'll find halfway through their season, mm-hmm. there's a dominant it's one team running away. There's and, always one team running away with it. Yeah, but okay, I think maybe F one is different in this respect than like say football or american football or, or, or hockey, or hockey. Or like in, that, in the yeah. sense that you kind of for those sports for the the, the big team sports mm-hmm. uh, association sports you you tend to root for like one team and like that's your team and that's whatever your team. like that's exactly. your team like and that's it and nobody talks no, nobody talk about anything else mm-hmm. and you, you won't even go like you don't want to even watch any of the other like teams you will not uh, yeah whereas an f1 even though you can, or like it, it's you know pretty frequently. Like you'll find like Ferrari fans, you'll find McLaren fans. Uh, it's also really easy to like just love the sport as a whole. Well, you it's like, easier yeah. because yeah. all of the teams race at the same time. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, when two teams in hockey or baseball are playing, you're like, well, I'm just gonna watch the team I like a little bit more, even if it's like by a percentile. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> The di- another difference too is that you're seeing now eleven teams at once instead yeah. of two, like a one on one type of thing. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. not. It's not a one on one. It's, it's just not, like it's not Mercedes they're versus totally different. the next thing. It's not yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, there's, <clears throat> it's the grid is split up into the leaders, the midfield, and the back markers. Yeah, there's eleven teams. You can't divide it evenly. You can't, yeah, there's almost four in each, but yeah, they sort of overlap, and you see teams move up and down. Like Haas is in fourth last from last place. Williams is in fourth from the top. So I like to see, like, the, the Force India is still in midfield. They're fifth right now, but they're right behind Williams becoming, mm-hmm. maybe push them into the midfield, and yeah. Toro Russell's in the midfield. McLaren's trying to get up above them, get their, like, it's a, it's a battle. Like, Haas and McLaren being four points apart. Haas is a back marker still. They're in yeah. the bottom four. McLaren's fifth from the back. So yeah. it's a battle there between them being midfield and back markers. McLaren's almost pushed to a back mark by Haas, right? That's a... I, I don't know. For me, I, I, lo- I love all these the little stories I follow. I just thought I just thought of you know kind of going on that. I, I I just thought of something. Remember something that we were actually talking about at the beginning of the year. Remember when we were talking about uh, when uh, F1 metrics and actually if you haven't checked out F1 metrics dot blogspot or no it's F1 metrics dot wordpress dot com. Mm. Wordpress, they yeah. just just Google F1 metrics one word. Uh, <laughs> It's um, it's a blog of uh, Dr. Andrew Phillip. We had a good discussion with him about his preseason form guide, and even though like he he the actually got halfway over, but it's probably still worth going back and looking at. Oh yeah, he got he got quite a bit. Like he he did like an in depth ama- analysis of like the preseason testing and like where everybody was, and some of that like some of his conclusions from then don't still don't hold to this day. Right. But one of the things that like that he know that that he pointed out. Uh, is that the midfield was going to be very tightly packed. And we're still seeing that. And I mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. that, more than anything, the fact that we've had a highly competitive midfield, mm-hmm. and like the, we were just talking about like how it's... like, this, like We're talking about from Toroso up, it's like an open battle almost. Yeah. Uh, in some races, like they're swapping positions and whatever. And and the fact that we've had also another thing that that has that stuck out is that we don't have one clear back marker anymore. So those two things still hold. Well, Sauber is <laughs> leading the back markers with zero constructor points. Yeah, but but <laughs> they're also they're fighting. There's so there's there's yeah, there's yeah. there's some good fights at the very back. There's some good fights in the middle, and that has made this season like great. This is. And some people would argue that, like, oh, then imagine how mu- how much greater it would be if there was like a tight uh, fight at the top. But a tight fight at the top, if everything else is boring and predictable, 
does not necessarily like like it's not gonna give us a season like we've seen so far where every right. race yeah. right. is great. You want what you do want, and it's like this season has proven it is competitiveness. Yes, yeah. there should there. It's it's F one, and if, inevitably you're gonna have some people at the top that are gonna be at the top of everybody, and etc. 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 But if you have a competitive midfield and some like interesting battles at the back end of the grid as well, it does make for better racing. Like there's yeah. there's no other argument that you should need to like then start considering like all right you know what for the sake of the sport for the sake of the racing for the sake of everybody involved let's let's talk more seriously about this money redistribution because we should be able to yeah i think that's like the biggest problem uh, sort of with it because like that having more money for the smaller teams will increase competitiveness mm-hmm. i think just innately like if the big teams are always sort of so, like going to but, be the big three but then but then it's but then it's good for the sport yeah and it's it attracts more fans mm. it attracts more viewers it makes the racing great everybody's talking about f1 you know i, I feel like i mean it, it, you know the fact that we have this podcast could be could have a little bit more to do but right. i have noticed that um more people than ever before have come up to me with like Hey, like, so like, you're into F1, right? Like, I heard this thing, or like, or just people that I meet that I meet completely in the random, yeah, and like, they just like ask me about like stuff, and like, oh, whatever, like, I'm, you know, or start talking to me sp- about sports, and I'm like, oh, I'm not really into that, like, kind of into F1. Like, people have like a knowledge, and they've heard the names, they've yeah. heard, they've heard about yeah. Vettel, they've heard about Lewis Hamilton more than yeah. before, and if that's happening because the racing has been great. Just think about like think about big picture. Redistribute like the money a little bit more evenly. Have mm-hmm. the bottom teams like catch up a little bit. Right. Be more competitive. Bring more attention to the sport. Eventually, you'll make that money back. That money that you like forgo to just like let them like be more competitive. You'll get it back in like a sponsorship attention and commercial. Uh, and, and you know the TV rights being worth more because more people are watching, etc., etc. Right. Yeah. When you feel better too, like. Say, pretend you're Nico Rosberg or Lewis Hamilton or Vettel or mm-hmm. Ricardo, whoever at the top. If you beat a team that is like right up your ass, actually, right? Actually, like giving you like a fight. Actually, a challenge, yeah. not yeah. like you finish two and three laps ahead of some of the cars. Like, fuck. Come on, man. That's yeah. not even fun. You just just pass them like, yeah. like an, an old lady mode. on the yeah, yeah, like an old lady on the highway. It's a time travel or a time travel, um, time attack or like you know, like you're just trying to do the best lap you can, and that's exciting yeah. to them and us to, to a degree but yeah, but if they're taking you know here yeah actually i think i think you've just like like kind of arrived on something which is like yeah i i actually think it's true maybe if like you can you can really tell when a race is exciting and racing in f1 is exciting when everybody's out there like during the race doing like just gunning for qualifying laps every yeah. time when everybody's like just driving the shit out of the car yeah. and that happens more when there's more competitiveness yeah something else that really show, shows <clears throat> the battle at the top this year is all the reliability issues they're pushing that's shit to awesome. the edge like that's, yeah. suspensions falling yeah. apart because it's it's like 5% over the minimum strength that you point need. Oh 0.05 even <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for weight of, of a lot of compa- yeah. components like uh how many engine failures have been this year? A bunch, a bunch. Lewis is like in a fifth of Le- something. Le- you know, Mer- Mercedes, they f- feel in the heat. Like yeah. Ferrari screwed up, whatever they did with their back suspension. It's not working for them, whatever. But they don't know what their, their problem is. But they've had this, it's the, the same kind of thing. Yeah. You've seen uh, some Red Bulls blow up. Oh, yeah. They're maybe pushing those tag horrors a bit harder than Renault's pushing their engine, right? Yeah. Renault's trying to get data. They're, they're, they've, I think they said some. I forget the quote, but something like they're using the rest of the season as a large test session that's another just like testing out uh has just aero changed. concepts and yeah they, yeah they just took over the team but back from lotus and but even since they took they, over the team they've they've made some changes to their management already mm-hmm. oh, yeah, already yeah. remember at the start of the season how much a bit bull was on tv yeah they're talking to him nonsense <laughs> before the season now because he's he's gotten he's he's pretty much done their, demoted. He's gotten demoted. He got demoted, <laughs> and they they did their job too. They they just they were just getting Renault mm-hmm. Renault's name out there. Now it's out there. Yeah, I expect to see them back next year. Renault. 
And they get some data I hope so and I, damn, I, damn I hope so I yeah, hope that yeah. like next year they actually like get their shit together and like oh, can't wait get a good car fat, fat and, and get, get Magnuson some, some like a chance like because he's a good driver I think he's a competent good driver put Ocon in the other car have them both like battle it out that could be it could be like the next like sorry Jolene yeah you know what I mean <laughs> yeah sorry sorry Jolene <laughs> sorry Jolene not me uh <laughs> Uh, but yeah, okay. I think you know, I think just oh, I, I I'm about ready to move on now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't when I when I said it like half an hour ago. Get some. Sh- should we cut it off and go to the go to some bits? Yeah, let's come back. We'll come back with some bits. In some a few minutes. Apple rumors, Imola rumors, some fan boost rumors, some Pirelli testing demands, and a little bit of ten a weekend <laughs> right at the end, just uh, under the. Get a little FAQ in there. Absolutely. Okay. I All see right. you guys. What's up, bros? <laughs> and broettes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where do you want to start here? Mm-hmm. The tracks that tracks that are bidding to be tracks that are not to be tracks that are bidding to be it Grand Prix <laughs> that don't exist anymore, but will exist. Little 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 calculation there happening. Little little. Some rumors coming from Italy. You're talking about Emola? Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, if it's Hungary roaring, it's got to be Emola, right? right? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some crazy news oh, this week that Imola has signed a contract with Bernie Ecclestone mm-hmm. to host the Italian Grand Prix. I think this came out this morning or last night. The last, tw- depending what, I guess, obviously time zone you're in. Yeah. The last 24 hours, anyways. <clears throat> It's pretty interesting because last week we were looking Very at the Bari Grand Prix. Yeah. These guys have 200 million bucks, the, the Bari Grand Prix pushers. Mm-hmm. They have $200 million behind them to bring back the Bari Grand Prix. Or at least they say they do. They say they do. They've been pushing this at all the races mm-hmm. since Monaco. They talked to Bernie. They yeah. got his blessing to push it for 2020. They're looking at, they're looking at three years from now, three or four yeah. years to, to push it for 2020. Build the facilities, the, the paddock club. And the uh, TV center and all that floating on the ocean on the, yeah. on the bay. How cool. Bari's in Italy, if you don't know. But we also said about a month ago, the the people, I don't remember the names. There's too many Italian names. Mm-hmm. But the Monza peoples somehow got passed through the Italian law, mm-hmm. Italian business law, that the only way, by law, that Italy could hold a, the Italian Grand Prix was at Monza. It's the only Holy circuit shit. that could be called the Italian Grand Prix. So the Imola race, though, we, we all know, was held as the the San Marino Grand Prix. It was the San Marino Grand Prix. It was another. I thought you were gonna, you were gonna back me up there. No, no, no. It was the San Marino Grand Prix. <laughs> it was and, the San and, Marino and Grand Prix. Up to uh, 06. 06 was the last one, I think. Okay, I, th- I think. I think it is. It is worth noting that uh, you know. We, we, we we probably have some new Formula One fans yeah, for sure, jo- for sure. joining us. I wanna I wanna I wanna to talk about that for a second. So, the San Marino Grand Prix, uh, it was a very important Grand Prix for a long time. It was one of the craziest races of the season. Imola is one of the all time great Formula One circuits. It has like, and this is what this is one of. The, one of the reasons why people like consider it so feasible is because it was so good. It was such a good track. It had like such. It is like it will always be remembered as the place that took Ayrton Senna's Ayrton life. Senna. Um, mm. Yeah, good, good track. Like good challenge. I mean, it was a challenge for old Senna, right? Like so that's that that's gonna tell you something. It's got like this crazy layout that that uh, it, that you see there. Now hey, it was don't called. Forget. Roland Ratzenberger died the day before yeah, right, the yeah, same right, circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, um, the two of their deaths <laughs> yeah. led to the end of the race. Well, I mean, no, it, and, no, it still happened in well into the nineties. It was like it was money. It was it was of course so it's, money and like it's always money. But uh, yeah. so, but I mean, it was called the San Marino Grand Prix, even though it's actually not in the country of San Marino. San Marino is actually a pretty interesting country because it is an enclave completely surrounded by Italy. This is not in San Marino. Okay. This is not. It is just San Marino is like maybe like less than an hour uh, just drive away. But San Marino is a very, very tiny country 
that doesn't have any like actual like cities in it. It's like right. it is a town. It's a very very tiny country that you can just just drive like across like in less than an hour even. Uh, it's 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 a tiny country, man. It's and it's embedded fully surrounded by the Italian Republic. And the thing is that if you have two tracks in your country, and you want to have you know, you want to have two Formula One races with the, in those two tracks. You can only call one of them the, the, name the Grand after... Prix of your country. So uh, the okay. Italian Grand Prix, because since pretty much its inception, uh, I may be wrong with that, but at least as Formula One is concerned, as far as like yeah, the 1950 since championship. 1950, yeah, since 1950, it was a Monza. And uh, Monza, that crazy banked ass yeah. Pirelli circuit. Yeah. <laughs> and Monza has such a history. It's, it is one of like the, like, it, like it's, it's, it comes in terms of a uh, Formula One races held. I think it's Monaco, then Monza. Like it's been around forever. So you couldn't. Silverstone st- is up there, except for the boycott year, like two thousand eight. Yeah. I think it's seven or eight. Yeah. They had to boycott and ruin their record. So when they when they decided to start hosting Grand Prix Grand Prix here as well as Monza, they had to give the the title of the Italian Grand Prix to Monza. Obviously, because Monza had like the bigger history behind it, right. so this became the San Marino Grand Prix, because San Marino was like, you know what, we'll be we'll be in it, even though the track is not exactly in our country, right. we'll we'll let you like use like our national sporting authority, like we'll let you use the name of our country oh, to host this race, so it can still be like a grand prize, like a big name. It, it's it can still right. mean something. And in, in the same way, the Bari Grand Prix that we talked about, which is being pushed right mm-hmm. now for a 2020 event, would be called the Mediterranean Grand Prix. Right, because you can't Italy. have it can't have the Italian. It can't so be. So it's Italian really country. just name alone then that separates yeah, it. Yeah, that, what, what's, so, a name is everything, man. Sometimes well, they've they've had in the past, like in the I, I don't know the exact year. Sorry, 70s, 80s, two American races. So they had the American. And the Western American. Well, no, they had, they had so they had like the yeah the U.S. Grand, the US like Grand Prix, the, and the, the United States Grand Prix, and, and then the, the, the Western West U.S. One. Grand Prix. In in Germany, they had this is where the European Grand Prix has fallen in. In Germany, they've had years where they raced at two circuits called one was the German Grand Prix, one is the European Grand Prix because mm-hmm. they couldn't have two German Grand Prix yeah. Grand Prix. And the European Grand Prix has jumped around though. Like this year was in and at one point actually it interesting at one the Valencia interestingly at one point Grand Prix. The uh, the race that happened at the uh, the Nurburgring mm-hmm. was actually called the Luxembourg Grand Prix mm. because for the same situation because it uh, couldn't be the German Grand Prix because German Grand Prix was already in Hockenheim the region yeah no oh, L- Luxembourg was a different country altogether they just like close enough so they're like you know what well, whatever take what, a, take our number our name what do you think there if so we've we've got the Canadian Grand Prix. Yeah, been in Montreal f- yeah. since forever. Yeah, sixty seven or whatever. Yeah, if they brought one to Toronto, what do you think it would be called? The North American Grand Prix. The Southern the North American Grand Prix. No, no, the North. North American. American. I've actually thought about this. So it would be the North American Grand Prix, on on like, held on like, continental circuit. The North American Grand Prix held on like what would America in the, have to in say the about street, that in the streets of toronto have to ask donald trump uh, no, if no, he no. can use that name no no but like, it's, listen because this actually could be a very good idea honestly like, let's go let's go to city hall with this and like like let's plan this okay so an, a north american grand prix held in toronto okay in the streets of toronto fourth like, biggest city in north america yeah, yeah exactly so we have a claim for it uh <laughs> it's held in the streets somewhere like you know pull this off there's there's a bunch of like streets that like could do the job for like some like fast flowy circuits like it could be quite a decent race and toronto would would put on a good show Mm -hmm. and then have it rotate with another american city and uh maybe even like go down to mexico like have that claim of, of oh that's so, so that's the every, first so triple rotating every, race every every three years like like it would be in Toronto but so it would be like let's say uh, year one of the North American Grand Prix it could be in you know Toronto 2018 then year two could be New York 2019 the New Jersey and Grand Prix. then and then yeah and then oh, that circuit was so badass yeah and then like I, I clearly remember the episode and the then make the third the one like if you're gonna it. if you're gonna go to Mexico like make the third one like in it like on the beach you know because like, there hasn't been really like since zanvoort there hasn't been like a like a beach grand prix like mm-hmm. situated right at the beach like a, at a mm-hmm. nice beach you know what i mean but i think i think they could sort of like and, and and this could work in many levels too if you make 
all temporary facilities. So the uh, the pits, the pit buildings could be. You know how for the London Olympics, mm-hmm. they pulled it off and they pulled it off well, and they they were able to pull it off. Uh, even though like London wasn't as, like they didn't necessarily have like Shanghai money, mm-hmm. but they still pull off some great Olympics because a lot of the buildings that they used were temporary facilities, right? So they didn't gotcha. they didn't have to like spend the money to build like permanent facilities, right? So what you do is like a ton of like you make a ton of the facilities, um, temporary facilities, and you move them around. So you move oh. the barriers like. As 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 the Grand Prix goes to the states, then you move all those facilities to the states. As the Grand Prix, How about goes, like Chichen Itza, yeah, or something. You use the pyramid as the paddock club. <laughs> cut a cut a cut a track through the jungle. T- it could be pretty cool. Never mind seagulls. Get some fucking blue ball monkeys swinging over the track. I feel I feel like you would anger some sort of god. No, no, but seriously, how cool would that be? How cool would that be? A rotating, a triple country rotating, North American Grand Prix, Toronto, then another one in, in we walk in or whatever, like just outside of, of New York with mm-hmm. the with the Manhattan skyline in the background, and then another one somewhere cool in Mexico, and or or even like on an island, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, do it like man made or otherwise or otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> no, but come on, come on, back me up. How sweet would that be? I would absolutely love that. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so go- going back though to Imola. Great track. It's seen some amazing races uh, when it was still on. Unfortunately, it took the life of Erden Senna, but it is, you know, all the more... Roland Ratzenberger as well. And, and Roland Ratzenberger. Uh, Same weekend. Uh, it, it, it was... It's, it's, it's a track that, like, it still, like, lives in people's memories, right? Like, if you've been watching Formula One for long enough, you remember Imola and you remember the races yeah. that happened there. And it would be. I, I. I would like to see it back. I haven't. I don't. But I, I've seen the clips. Yeah, I. I would like to see it back, except. It's apparently like it's. It may not happen, because yeah. the people at Monza are are like are, pissed. Yeah. So, let me read you a direct quote from Bernie Eccleston here. Yeah. Because, like I said, the, Imola has changed ownership structure and everything in the last few years. They've mm-hmm. been. They were losing money forever, like a lot of circuits yeah. worldwide. They changed a lot of stuff, upgraded their safety, repaved the circuit, new facilities, and they've made money the last two years. So this is coming from Bernie Eccleston. I'm going to read you a fairly long quote here. He said, at this point, there's no more political problems. This is talking about Italy in general. But he, he said, um, despite he ha- having a deal in place with Imola, which, like I said, 2006 yeah. was the last race, he said... We've now got an agreement with Imola there that's ready to go. But we've a guy there that's saying either we do things my way or not at all. So when people say that, you know what the answer is going to be. He must do what he thinks is the right thing to do. And if we don't have a race in Italy, it won't be because of me. He has a contract and all that's required is a signature. And as I've said before, he has got to get a pen and sign. They're good deals for them. They can please themselves. Mm. But again, he said, if the if the race took place, the San Marino tag would be on it, and uh, it would also have to be signed off by Stichi Damiani, who we also talked about when we talked about Monza, I think two weeks ago. So Imola signed their contract, but Ecclestone himself cannot sign it until Stichi Damiani signs it, who is the president of the ASC? ACI. Oh, the it is the automobile the club of Italy, right? Automobile club the 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 presidente del auto club d'italia mm-hmm. i said that i'm sorry italians I'm really <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he's the president of the auto club of italy who is in charge of s- racing sporting in italy and yeah. the country's representation <coughs> worldwide yeah which is pushing he's pushing monza he's got he's on monza's side that that's where his money is going that's where his his power is going and who knows about this Bari and Imola thing? But I, I guess this is more for Ecclestone. He's mm-hmm. got like Monza. You guys don't pay for this shit. If you oh yeah. If you don't come up with that money, uh, that we're at one. He got. He got. We'll, he we'll he got tired. We we'll just jump over. He got. He got tired of being dicked around too much by Monza. Because right. because but, but here, what he wants is more money. Obviously, like a lot. He wanted. A, he was asking for a lot more money and 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 for them to like do a lot of work, right? To like read read 
like redesign this or like re- like rebuild this part of the track or like the, this facilities. Right. And Monza was basically for like a long time. What the argument was like, shut up, Bernie. You'll take what you're you'll take what you're given because there's nobody else who's gonna host the Grand Prix, right? Yeah, and mean, now that you don't say that to a Sith Lord, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so he he probably has been wheeling and dealing and like like started like this thing or like gave the people at Bari a little bit of hope, gave the people at Imola a contract, and now he's like, what do you mean nobody else wants it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Because and. The Imola people, they've said, like, we're ready. We have the money now to upgrade this to grade one, modern grade one mm-hmm. stuff. They need an answer by December to start the work. Mm. Probably they can push it a little past if they're conservative. But yeah. to finish off Ecclestone's quote and show you where his re- his head really is, he said, "Whatever, wherever we race, be it Imola or Monza, it needs to be sanctioned by him, Stichy Damiani, anyways, whatever you call it. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you, yeah, it's, it's got to be sanctioned by him, whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah. Oh we, got, we, know, we got no political problems, though, whatever you call that. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyways, oh Bari's pushing hard. The, the only problem for Ecclestone, yeah. which I guess is a problem, the Italian Grand Prix can only be called that if it's at Monza. Yeah, so it's, so if it happens in Imola, it won't if be. If it happens at Imola, there still won't be technically an Italian Grand Prix. Even though, you know, obviously they'll push that idea that it, this is the italian grand prix but but, 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 Sam, but san marino no san marino has the it's san a marino republic ha, the san marino ha, grand prix has sort of ha, as a grand prix though happening in, in, in imola it has its has, own history yeah too. it has its own history i think i think i think there's room i think there's there's room now yeah, okay, yeah. People, actually yeah yeah people Look would love up. to see that come go, back go go to some yeah zoom in to san marino florence and, and then like it's about equal distance from florence and bologna well the, uh, Bologna, but Bologna, <laughs> uh, Bologna. Like, d- d- look up driving directions from there. Bologna so, so sandwich. Click where it says Città di San Marino. Yeah, okay. outside there, right there. Yeah. And then like go go directions and then type. Uh, <laughs> um, en- Enzo, E N Z O, E N Z O. Yeah, E space E, space. Yeah, this one. This one. Yeah. Autodromo Enzo. Edino Ferrari. So an hour and twenty minutes away from the actual. myself to the Italians. Yeah. So was that so an hour and twenty minute drive from from the actual like Republic of San from Marino? San Marino city center. Yeah. I mean, how fast could the Formula One cars get there? That's oh, that's really... a good question. They should do that. They should do about that. Twenty minutes, about twenty they, minutes. Like you know, you know how you know how Le Mans, you know how Le Mans has like uh or actually like you might not know this, but the start of the twenty four hours of Le Mans, mm-hmm. you don't start in your car. You actually do like like the drivers, like yeah. all run you to run their cars on the grid. Get st- on the grid, get str- from one point they all run to their cars, no get strapped way. in, start it up. <laughs> that's that that's a Le Mans start. God. So instead of having a Le Mans start for whenever like the San Marino Grand Prix comes back, they should have all the F1 cars drive from the San Marino <laughs> to the circuit, and that's the start of the race. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's great. Oh, okay, and uh, th- here he actually like. Uh, about about halfway through, okay, go back to here. This down here, right here. Yeah, Faenza. Faenza. That's where uh, Toro Rosso is based out of. Oh, crazy! Yeah, yeah. so they, they would be super close to, to to Imola, so they'd be like pretty happy, probably. I think so. Yeah. Now, do you think they would actually have these two races? No. At the same yeah, time, I don't. I don't know. Like money i guess it would, yeah. it would be determined by money and by attendance really right yeah because essentially people are going to either go to one not both in italy yeah you'd have that choice right like yeah. if you live like somewhere like dead smack in the middle yeah. or even if you live down in rome or florence yeah you'd be like you'd be scratching hey you'd like do i go to milan yeah like it's it's, it's kind of like the just the way italy kind of works i guess a little bit that it's down to this one guy mm-hmm. stitchy damiani to sanction the race like he has to sanction it if Bari wants to race all the way down there at the bottom of the shoe of the boot Stitchy's gonna have to sign off on that too mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's his political energy whatever is pointed at Monza like and Monza themselves is doing a bunch of circuit upgrades this year oh yeah but I guess for next year I don't think we're not gonna see it this year they but getting to. rid of that first chicane getting rid of the Curva Grande going down that old Pirelli curve and 
Into yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna see like if those changes are for the better or for the worse, and then based on that, like the I think argument it's be for the better. They're, they're predicting like one to two seconds a lap faster. Tossing on some a, on gravel a, on an already very fast circuit. The Temple of Speed. Yeah. yeah. And throwing some gravel back around the parabolica. Thank goodness. Oh, I'm so happy for that. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. it. Fuck baguettes. Yeah. Throw some <laughs> gravel around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Throw some gravel. Hey. Okay. Uh. We were talking earlier about um, that tr- Toronto race or whatever, like yeah, <laughs> the impossibility of that. Really, I mean, well, it boggles my mind. But there is there is a race Honda that happens Andy. in Toronto Honda of Andy. somewhat import of of some importance. Some might say <laughs> it was cool, man. Like some it was just see. yeah. Just I, I don't want to spend like a lot of time into this because you know, but it was like it is so different the amount the the access that so many ways as a fan you have for indie and like i know that it's it's indie and like you can't compare it to f1 like the amount of attention that f1 gets you know some of those some of the drivers were like driving around or like we're just walking around in like in the middle of the you know the crowd like actually yeah we were there and before before you got there mike like we were inside where the building where they have all the teams basically their paddock yeah, basically their paddock. It's indoors at Toronto, anyways. But mm-hmm. they have all of their motorhomes and uh, hospitality type stuff in there. Yeah, they have their what? Uh, I forget exactly what they're called. But basically, their scrutineering type. Yeah. They call it something else. Yeah, technical inspection center where they weigh the cars like an F one. But right after the rate, like the first practice, Jay and I walk through there. All the cars and drivers are just coming through like nothing. Some of the drivers are driving scooters. Yeah, gas bikes inside the building. Just, oh, sorry, sorry, get out of my way. Sorry, but yeah, all the drivers are right there. Like, yeah, like this you could, close, you could, like, yeah, yeah, you could just, just, just walking around like normal people. And I don't know if it's a combination of like just people actually like not knowing who the drivers are actually, yeah. or like Part actually having their enough respect to like be like, yo, they, these guys are busy. I doubt something. it's the latter. It's a bit yeah. of both. It might be a it's little a bit, bit of both. both. But or people just don't know anything about the sport. And at the, yeah, and they just show up there like once a year just because yeah. it's fun. But, but still like you i just, just couldn't imagine anything like that happening in f1 like in the current terms the spectacle of it the australian stadium super trucks that was cool yeah that was pretty cool i saw that i got to watch that online they did an online stream they're fucking these basically like a mix between a race car and a monster truck they race around the indie circuit we left we left before it started because it was oh, about that to was rain you were showing yeah with Friday. ramps and whatever jumping yeah, fucking, around they throw up ramps on the straightaways like <laughs> or obstacles that they have to judge to judge yeah yeah, they're called state. It's it's Australian, obviously. Like when you hear that, you're yeah. like, oh yeah, that's Australian. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be. They <laughs> just invent crazy Australian, sports. Mate. Stadium yeah. super trucks. Yeah, yeah. Do they kind of follow the indie circuit? I remember like when we were we were sort of c- coming back from there and we were watching it and I saw them. I was like, why are they up and down so much? Why are they moving around? Yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, yeah a- they got ramps. They do jumps. They jump and big shit. suspensions. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. No, but yeah, it's it's it, it was you know it's it's. Uh, even though some of those things would not be totally doable uh, with with uh, with F one, like you couldn't, you North probably American couldn't, Grand Prix. Yeah, but you, you probably couldn't have like the drivers just walking around in front of like just normal fans only because some people out there are like obsessed and fanatics. We are, and <laughs> and and would just like go on like try to like their best to like get as close as possible to the drivers and like yeah. ask him questions or whatever. You probably couldn't get away with that with some of that stuff like you know having the sport that close to the fans mm. with F1. So- but at the same time there's a lot that F1 could be doing mm. that it wouldn't take it, it, Bernie is terrified of uh removing like the element terrified. of like of 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 exclusivity to F1. Right. But there's yeah. some of the stuff that could be done that wouldn't take away from either yeah you know what i mean yeah not not a super twitter plug or anything but there's no other way for you to see if you look at, at our twitter page flat out at flat out fever you can see a couple of pictures i posted from there where we're like right up to the cars like one inch from the car like wow. three minutes after fp1 like the tires are still hot oh yeah. The car, the car is coming right in. They're like You're encouraging, right in, right hey, guys, no, come check this out. This is, it's still warm. No, <laughs> and and the mechanics were walking the car back in, and like, yeah. like I they got, were like, dragging them with. They had the mechanics sitting in the car, dragging them with the, with the truck. Type but thing. they, they still. I mean, you, you, you got close enough to ask the guys. I, I remember asking them, like, hey, like, so, why do you do this particular thing with your back, like, arrow thing the around, arrow there, around the what? And you know that 
took the time they looked at me they acknowledged my question they were like oh you know it's not it's not really it's just kind of personal preference and kept along the way but see, that alone yeah like, for uh youtube watchers as you can probably see my laptop here and they can't the middle really see it again <laughs> up or down up up, up uh, down. It's, it's just, just too, give, too give up <laughs> what, uh, oh you can see it mike i can see it but yeah you can uh, get this close except wow. uh, i stuck a flat off here stick around the rental front wing <laughs> <laughs> i'll post that picture soon <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it, it was cool to see. Uh, so shout out to the to the guys in 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 Indy. Like for what it's worth, like I think that F one like in terms of access does have a lot to learn. I that think, was bad. I, I think there's like, like a problem with that idea though, because the whole you, exclusivity thing. Oh, well, yeah. no, in the sense of that, if you just like let anyone come in, uh, you the more people that like something, the more yeah. people that are into something, the more likely you're going to have someone who's crazy. Not, I don't want to no, label them as crazy No, no, 100%. People, but like yeah, fanatics be, of the yeah, sport. Like and real like, fanatics. I need to get yeah. in there and I need to smell the rubber with my both my nostrils taped to the floor. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. So uh, think, think of this comparison. To get into the Formula 1 pit lane, the paddock, whatever, the paddock club, whatever, it's thousands of dollars at any race, at any circuit. It's thousands of dollars. It's that exclusive. If, if you if wanted to pay for that, if you want, yeah, if you want to get paid, or else you get invited as a VIP because mm-hmm. you're a famous musician or politician or artist of whatever city the race is at. For the indie race, you can get in the paddock for thirty dollars. The tickets are thirty bucks. <laughs> Just like twenty, twenty-two euro, twenty-five bucks. Mm. It's nothing. Thirty dollars to get into the paddock. And you're but, in. You can go say hi to the it, drivers. It's one of those things we were talking about, that, that, that prestige of uh, Formula One. If it didn't have that, it would make yeah. it seem a little like too, indie. like, common. Like indie, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, no, this is yeah. this is for the... But, but you have to, like, okay, let's go back to, like... Letting people not into your club makes your club have prestige. It makes or, it... Or no, it, right? you or know what it's, I mean? Or it's a way to get to that, right? right? Like, it, yeah, ex- exclusivity and, like, keeping people not, keeping people out, then it gives it that, that air of, like, what you say, like, prestige and, like, mm-hmm. high-classness and, 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 and all this other stuff. <sighs> but it, that doesn't always hold because it could just be better. Like, it could just be that much more desirable if it's mm-hmm. that much more of a better sport. Right. And it, then it doesn't need to gimmick... Right. <laughs> yeah. At, at the same time, F1 is almost too big to do what we did like on Friday. Yeah. The indie tracks, the yeah. circuits. I assume all of them have something like what we did, the fan free Fridays. Yeah. Sponsored by Make a Wish. I was sponsored by Honda, but yeah. What's that? It was sponsored by Honda, but yeah. Anyway, the no fan free Fridays was with 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 association. With aso- yeah. yeah. Well, the uh, Honda was matching the donations of Make a Wish. Yeah. I say this because my family was helped by Make a Wish. Oh, nice. So. Make a wish is badass, but anyways, they're they're doing that, and see they they kind of like like let you in to the the whole circuit. You can walk yeah. around like we did basically on the Thursday in Montreal. Yeah, we got to walk through the pit, but like eighty thousand people showed up for that. You can't yeah. really you can 60, sixty or eighty thousand people showed up for the Thursday thing. You can't combine it in F one. Yeah, but maybe you could in Baku. The idea is maybe great. in Hungary. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah there's there's definitely like I mean it's not. Like Indy, if it grows the, like they the, hope it will, then yeah. they're gonna have to evolve away from that, anyways. Yeah. yeah. The, mm-hmm. the, well, the way it is in it, like right now, the way that, that, that we saw it, that wouldn't be possible in F one, and we and probably you, you probably wouldn't want it to be. But there's still that's still not to say that some of that spirit, like uh, the spirit of those ideas, can translate to F one because mm-hmm. they can because there is a way to like force that interaction to like make more of that happen. So I was gonna say, look at just two examples that we saw. Being at there Friday, like we saw the drivers, like whoop, they're walking right past us, yeah. like holy shit, like they probably go out downtown on the evenings, like like nothing's happening. Mm-hmm. But we talked to somebody who in Montreal went to a nightclub. Lewis Hamilton showed up with security, three or four guys around him. Yeah, that no, just no, no pictures, no pictures. No, yeah. follow him around. Don't let you take pictures of him. Jesus. It's it's a whole nother level. It's a yeah. totally different thing. Yeah. Like. I think even maybe not somebody like Juan Pablo or whatever. If you bumped into him, maybe Harry Anto is just like, oh, hey, guys, <laughs> want my autograph? Can yeah. you please take my autograph? <laughs> take it. Can you tweet this number for me? Yeah, it's tweet. only going to cost you a few cents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a whole nother level. But a Toronto Grand Prix in our lifetime, let's push it. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Um, and I guess like uh, I, I one thing that we can – Oh, actually, what do you have like about this fan boost thing? 
Get, let, let me do find out Canadian thing. Lance yeah. Stroll. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We've so been looking at this guy, Torontonian. Yeah. The looking. No, no, uh, Montrealian. Sorry. Montrealer. The Montrealian. He's uh, there's two Canadians pushing up, but anyways, he's just signed a contract with Williams to do up to twenty full day test sessions That's in one a of lot. the old cars. That's a lot, and they're not talking about like twenty days straight or like. 20 days in in brackets full of driving mm-hmm. they want to take them around the world to a few circuits to get like some different experience different types of circuits and climates right. yeah uh, serious. Get, get, get him somebody is really serious about this dude yeah, yeah. Probably he's, 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 which is really exciting there for oh come on i mean uh for, uh, for, for canadians if he, if he lands if he lands a, a formula one seat uh he's money fan like i'm and, the i'm the first in line and he stroll, you know what stroll? he was he he had a bit of a patchy season last year in his mm-hmm. current uh, uh, series that he's competing. He's competing ma- mainly in the European Formula Three, okay, which is a FIA sanctioned championship, which is where uh, Max Verstappen came from. Oh, that is what he used to do before Formula One. Um, and last year he was at one point compared to Maldonado because he caught he was <laughs> he had like a string of like big crashes. Oh no, but. Maybe it was a matter that, like, he just had the raw talent. He had just come from, like, winning, like, a few championships in a row okay. of, in different, like, parts of the world. Uh, so maybe it was that, like, he, he did have the raw talent but, like, had to, like, hone it. And it seems like he has grown since last year. He's mm. he's He was leading uh, – he's still leading the championship, isn't he? I think he is. I think anyway. so. Uh, and in uh, Zandvoort, in the last uh, uh, place that they race, and they, they do, like, three races per weekend. Uh, but in the last place they raced – he actually like did like he got two two out of three pole positions mm. by clocking fastest time after fastest time. Now those got taken away because um, his team actually like messed around with his uh, rear suspension. But he has been strong and he's he's been racing. And if he keeps like putting it on pole, it isn't hard to think that that I, that we 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 are gonna see a Canadian in the Formula One grid by twenty eighteen. That that's. That is Stroll hard. slash Latifi. Yeah, one of those two. It might they might make it, which would be amazing. Yeah, they both got a lot of noise, mm. noise backing them up. Yeah, 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 especially Stroll. So it should be good. <clears throat> Before we talk about E Boost, let's let's finish up the F one. Per- Pirelli, I just want to gloss gloss yeah. over this quickly. So they just had a couple of quotes this week. No more high dig from Paul Hembry, 2017. Oh. There will not be any more high dig compositions of tires. Oh, so they're they're going for like the fully let's last the whole race distance. Yeah, uh, obviously there's going to be a lot more energy through the tires, but they're also pushing the compound to a higher operation window. Nice, it's interesting, interesting to see, and uh, whatever, whatever. We'll see how that goes. It's only halfway through this season. Yeah, just anyways, that's out of the way. But something that's important to them is they're looking for because this season they did all the preseason testing in Spain to save money, right, in Barcelona. Yeah. The year before, they went to Bahrain because it's more representative of part of the season. It's hot there. I mean, like, yeah. <clears throat> when they were in Barcelona, it was still cool, like 13, 14, 15 degrees Celsius. So, Pirelli's pushing hard for some Mideast testing, either at Bahrain or Abu Dhabi for the preseason or midseason testing. And uh, actually, something else, just, just to go back to Silverstone for a second, because there's last race but Vettel said in the past week just regarding the uh, the safety car start yeah uh, sorry this is what it's going way back but he said the drivers don't trust the wets in general that the drivers don't they, trust the wet tires the full wet tires yeah. so maybe that's mm. something to do behind the scenes that Formula 1 itself wouldn't say but Vettel said it it's interesting for sure they oh, yeah. seemed like uh, what was the um the, the the British Grand Prix they were pretty like no let's get off of them right away yeah like yes. half the half the half the cars did right yeah, they did ten percent of the race five five yeah. five five and a half yeah. full, five six full laps in yeah. the safety car so anyways, we'll, we'll see we'll see what comes up with that but the final big F one story this week is the Apple rumor oh yeah yes 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 um, Mr Sayward got his name in Apple Insider and Fortune magazine talking about him they, but See, there were there were two. I don't know if you read these articles, the Apple Insider and the no, I Fortune, didn't actually. Fortune articles. I kind of I had a busy week and I, I had to I didn't keep up with a they lot of. They both kind of went on either side. Like, I think Fortune kind of pushed the idea a little more. 
I don't know if they really know who Jose Ward is mm. a lot, or same with the Apple Insider people. Apple Insider was more like, yeah, maybe it could happen. And Fortune was more like, in a business sense, it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. But, so Joe Sayward himself posted a rebuttal to with the rebuttals <laughs> to himself today, this morning. But, I don't know, super interesting. Apple has something like $160 billion in, or no, $109 billion in cash, free cash. 106 or $109 billion dollars. <laughs> In free cash. And they just did an over $100 billion stock buyback. Still have... They have more cash finance, than the U.S. government. Uh, f- finance finance lessons he, uh, here, guys. There are big companies out there. And there's many, many multi-million dollar companies. And the companies that people... Yeah, Apple is the biggest no, company on Earth. No, no. Th- Apple is the biggest company on Earth. There's, there's, there's many multi-billion dollar companies out there. And like when you think of things like General Electric... Or, or General Motors, for, 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 for that matter, like the Ford, like, you know, the big, or, or Mercedes, uh, now, like, to bring it back to F1, or, or just, like, just about any other big company out there, and you hear, like, numbers, like, oh, this company's, like, um, their market capitalization is, like, so many hundreds of, mil- of billions, mm-hmm. so many billions, n- I, only a very, very, very small part of that number that they like tell you like how much a company's worth is actually cash in hand. Right. Nobody has cash in hand. Like right. a lot, most of these companies it's all are invested. Actually, it's all in other places. And, and the actual cash that they use to like mm-hmm. their day to day operations, a lot of it actually comes from debt. Yeah. That these that these companies get into. No, Apple actually is sitting on a mountain of cash. They I that they are like it's ready to be spent on the right way, but they just. They have like they actually have in terms of like cash ready to spend tomorrow if they choose to. They have the most out of like many of their big companies and even even like I said, I think more than the United States government. Yeah, free cash. I forget because they're upside down versions of each other, but it's either 106 or 109 billion dollars. Oh. Formula One is looking for eight billion in so value. So it should be chump change for that. Yeah, they're just yeah. like, oh and shit, C- I was sleeping on this uh, on the couch last yeah, night. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll just ahead. buy it. CBC yeah. has 35% to sell. And according to Joe Sayward, the, like F1 is for sale. That CBC has already taken the cash. And they're looking to sell it to just pay off that debt. Like they yeah. basically borrowed the debt, bought the company from themselves in debt. Mm-hmm. And just want to sell it. They want out. Ecclestone is 84 years old. Yeah. There's been a lot of rumors about his oh, replacement. The, the one thing that the, those kind of venture capitalists like uh, like CVC like, hate is instability. Mm. And they do not want to deal with a situation where all of a sudden Bernie might croak and die. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, that would be a disaster yeah. for Formula One, at least in the short term. But looking forward, some of the positives mm-hmm. for, towards Apple buying this. They've sold 800 million iPhones. Which is fucking insane. Yeah, 800 million iPhones, but they sold something like 20 million Apple ITVs, the Apple TV, mm. Apple TV product. Oh wow! They don't have anything exclusive yet, mm. which is really what you need. Which is like Netflix. Oh. Netflix took off making their own shows, right? Yeah. Apple TV doesn't have anything exclusive yet, mm. and so they've only sold about 20 million of them. And something that if you're Canadian. The CRTC, which is the governing body that looks over distribution of Canadian communications, telephone, internet, etc. All, all communications. Radio, whatever. Radio. Yeah. They legislated that Canadian companies have to offer some sort of a la carte system for TV channels mm-hmm. that you can say, like, I don't need a package of channels 1 to 36 or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever they sell. Yeah. I want this channel, this channel, and that channel. That's what I like. And they have to sell that. That's what Apple's doing. Yeah. But they don't have anything exclusive yet. So the looking at this is from Joe Sayward's math. If they bought Formula One and mm-hmm. sold only one percent of the Formula One audience and Apple T V box, mm-hmm. they paid for the company. True. They paid for buying Formula One. It's covered. <laughs> it's covered. Yeah. And for those that don't know, in twenty twenty, maybe it might be a year past 2021 apple's looking to launch the apple car like a vehicle you can buy and drive around and what what, what what more of a perfect platform yeah to, to distribute that than fucking than formula one formula one yeah. the, the, the pinnacle, pinnacle of motorsport mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah this, this is some of the articles my, my brain just kind of exploded hey but but but, but some of the articles but. against 
What do you got? Yes, the argument is sound and the argument makes sense. In some ways. In some ways. Mm -hmm. But you could also make uh, sort of a similar argument with, let's say, Amazon also sitting on a big pile of cash or Google. Also, mm. also sitting on a big pile of cash and also developing their own like their own range of cars, and all three companies with a big, big uh, stake and a big interest in uh, drone technology, which could be significant in years to come in F one. Neither of those other two have been tied to F one though. Yes. Right. Earlier, earlier this right. year, we reported some rumors that perhaps the owners of the what the hell are they called? The Miami Dolphins, mm -hmm. who have also billions of dollars. It's a U.S. football team. We're looking at buying the sport mm -hmm. to bring it to America, yeah. make it bigger. Yeah, I don't know. So, so some, of the, some of the arguments against is that traditionally, well, obviously, Apple is not traditional anymore. But traditionally, that Apple has bought and bought smaller companies which have some sort of exclusive or new technology that they want to absorb absorbed yeah. it yeah. yeah exactly absorbed it and incorporated it into the apple ecosystem as those mm. silicon valley guys like to say they incorporate it into the apple ecosystem and sell it as something exclusive you can only get from apple yeah. they haven't traditionally bought something this big but it's a small percentage of their ca their free cash. Yeah, it's like less than ten percent of their cash. It's it's crazy. It's it puts them in a crazy spot. Absolutely, the whole a whole new world. They're looking to push a vehicle. Yeah. The other one is pushing hybrid and driving now, technology. Yeah, let's let's think about about that for a second because if you're c gonna come up with a vehicle, Sorry, you're like right. vehicles ha like if you're gonna come up with a car, it has to necessarily be far reaching right Absolutely. it has to be like a global thing it can't no it like can't any longer be just like a, an exclusive thing so they might yeah they might be willing like to you know push something globally like f1 and and and, and change that i actually like honestly it can be worse than than what we have now it can be worse as cbc to be honest i i i vote for any of the big tech companies if they come and take over f1 it's only gonna be good for the fans. Yeah. Like, let's make no mistake about that. Mm -hmm. Be it Apple, be it Google, be it Amazon that has like a stake. Even like, you know, J J Jeremy Clarkson out there, talk to Amazon, talk to them into buying F1. Yeah. It's it would be a good idea. Yeah. But <laughs> Do it. Check check this final point. I got this from Joe Sayward. Yeah. Props to him. Eddie Q, the senior vice president of Apple, mm -hmm. has a seat on the board of Ferrari SPA. Which is interesting and also them owning formula one another huge benefit for them is that they would get some say to the fia who would have some say in them launching a vehicle as a be becoming an auto manufacturer right international auto I mean, manufacturer they don't want to sell these cars to america they want to sell them to the world yeah, you have you have to be far reaching you have course. to sell yeah, to everyone to, like, right tesla it. Yeah. Eddie Q, the senior vice president of Apple, has a seat on the board of Ferrari. Hmm. SPA, though. SPA. Which and doesn't mean like the whole Ferrari thing anymore. But a few other just interesting tidbits. Neither Apple nor, for, nor the FOM or CVC or anybody that owns Formula One has made any comment or rebuttal to this news. For or against? For or against. No comment either way. And at the same time, we, we talked at the start of the season mm -hmm. that Bernie said there's two owners, or I mean, two bidders who want to become owners. And it's all down to signing and whether or not CVC wants to sell. Mm -hmm. There were two bidders knocking, like, give us Formula One. Give it to us. Never specified who. Mm -hmm. And apparently, according to Sayward as well, as I said, they've taken the cash from Formula One. They, this part of the reason we talked about this last season yeah. when we started this podcast that CVC has been bleeding. They've taken the yeah. cash revenue from Formula One. They haven't invested it back. They've taken it and invested it. No. And they've only they, 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 what they've done like since doing that is just take on more debt to pay for like the operating costs or whatever. Like or not yeah, to give they think to get people gonna, dividends. They think they're going to get it back yeah. from eventually selling this company. They tried to float it on the Singapore Stock Exchange yeah, for eight billion dollars. Yeah, well, they they still think it's worth about eight billion. They own thirty five percent of that. No, 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 no. <laughs> their math, <laughs> their, yeah. their math 
makes it so that F1 has to be $8 billion, Otherwise, the math doesn't add up and somebody loses a job. Like, that's what it is. I know probably people get mad when they talk about MMA and stuff, but mm-hmm. listen to this. The UFC, owned by Zufa, which is controlled by the Fertitta brothers, who own Station Casinos, the biggest casino company in, in America, I believe. If it's not Station, they own the biggest casino company in the world. Just sold their stake in the UFC for $4 billion. So there's some kind of, I, I think, pressure on Formula One to sell for more than that. Because oh, sure. that sale last week to the WME group, which is some Hollywood talent agency, blah, blah, for $4 billion is the biggest sports transaction ever on earth. Mm-hmm. Look at the how big the NFL is. Yeah, It's bigger. It's $4 billion. Yeah. It's big. If, if F1 goes for 8 or 8 to 10, like they think, come on. It's crazy. That, that could be crazy. I I do believe that they're looking to sell. I don't know about this Apple stuff. I don't know where Jace, Jose Word gets his sources. He's never revealed them. He but, said uh, he actually when when he broke that Apple uh, was buying it. Like uh, maybe it was last week. Oh yeah, he we specifically can, we can have to go. Yeah, we can have to go. I remember like reading it on his blog. He said that the rumors were coming from Prince's Gate, i.e., mm. the FOM headquarters. Yeah, he knows somebody in, inside there. Yeah. And Fortune magazine, Fortune magazine made a point of saying that, who knows how much they really know about F one, but that Joe Sayward is known for his word. That's why he's an independent F one journalist. He's yeah. known, yeah, because he doesn't talk shit. He doesn't write sensationalist articles. He writes well thought out blogs. Joe Sayward dot wordpress dot com for his blog. He has some magazine, but I wouldn't encourage anybody to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never subscribed. I've read the free yeah. pages. Yeah. But th- thanks for the news, for sure. Uh, and I guess, uh, yeah, wh- 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 yeah what, were you, what were you going to say about the fan boost? So, <laughs> it, this kind of broke this week. Mm-hmm. The fan boost, this is just kind of an aside. It's whatever. A lot of people hate Formula E yeah. because of the threat it poses to Formula 1, whatever, whatever. They have something called fan boost anyways. Right. If you haven't seen a race. Oh, is this about the, 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 the vote buying? <laughs> the vote buying. There's a company called votesforcontests.com. I'm, I'm really sorry. We're working on uh, quoting sources here. <laughs> uh, actually, I can find this. Spannersready.com. Spannersready.com. Put this story together. This company called called votesforcontests.com. They have, they have a screenshot of a conversation with the votesforcontest.com customer service online chat that they they said hey have you guys ever done any votes for contest for a formula and they're like oh yeah 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 just give us the link for the contest we can do that they sell Uh, no so uh, there were some discrepancies according to the fia at the end of the formula ec second season this year yeah that a couple of drivers were pissed they believe that they lost the season due to the fan boost what the fan boost gives you is you get uh, some sort of button on your steering wheel that gives you a boost like some sort of an extra fans. extra few like horsepower so, so yeah if you're making news if you get in the fans eye that weekend they can vote on twitter and online and say like oh yeah i really want mike to get the fan boost this week and then your car has a button that gives you a boost so they've been forced to reduce the boost and the amount of time of the boost the strength of the boost because you can buy 10,000 votes <clears throat> for 550 dollars <laughs> 10,000 votes and they will appear like they're coming they can customize orders for making your votes appear like they came from anywhere in the world they'll happen over yeah, uh, man. Uh, man, some an unobvious shit. amount of time <laughs> yeah. yeah you can buy these votes for contests dot com there's your do we actually want to promote this on no the no, like, no. Let's, yeah let's yeah some website I'm talking, I'm talking shit say, about formula say, e on the let's formula say, one let's podcast say some website does this <laughs> yeah don't, formula one has no, nothing like this formula e is <laughs> Doing bullshit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Oh, well, anyway. Uh, I guess, like, the, the, the last thing that we, the, the we can uh, end it up with would be, um, as many of you might know, uh, last week we launched the 10 a weekend campaign. There's lots yeah. more to come from that uh, from mm-hmm. us uh, on this campaign. It's just uh, uh, <laughs> timing. Uh, but uh, within the, the next week uh, or so, we're going to re- be releasing a lot more updates and uh, like we're, we're actually serious about this. Uh, so we posted a, a thread on Reddit that got a lot of attention. Um, and basically, what what we're trying to bring to the fore, 
um, more than anything is awareness that right now inform like if you if you if you're a cord cutter like let's admit it all three of us are we yeah. do not we do not have a cable TV subscription I know many people our age in our in our same situation that do not have this this is a growing trend around the world mm -hmm. if you're but if you're a cord cutter it's very very hard to get a cord cutter by the way it means that you, you you may have a tv at home two tvs multiple tvs but you do not have a traditional cable tv subscription you make do just with your internet and right now with the internet you can have netflix you can have this you can have that and it, you you're you're watching like you can still watch tv now mm -hmm. today this is reality this is the world in 2016 do not dispute it go out there ask around this is a reality go go if you're from reddit go on reddit go to the subreddit that's uh, r slash uh, cord cutters this is real so the cord cutting is on the rise um prices of sports subscriptions and cable tv have been going up specifically to and it correlates with the rise of the cord cutters what mm -hmm. happened what's happening is that cable tv right now is sort of like unraveling it's yeah, in a big it's done big unraveling mess and the only thing that's holding it together and that's key, that's making still people like that you know making the argument of paying on a monthly subscription uh that's like that you have to like sign like year-long contracts for mm -hmm. the only thing that's that keeps people paying like the the out, sometimes outrageous amount of money that they're asking for is live events mm -hmm. such and specifically like more specifically sporting events right yeah yeah sports is the big one right? of course yeah because because, yeah. because it, it's it is one thing that tv or uh, or cable tv in, in the traditional sense still has over the internet there's there's a lot of on-demand tv out there on the internet but there's not a lot of live sports mm -hmm. the, the 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 thing is that some sports worldwide have already noticed this mm -hmm. and most most if not all most of the global ones and especially the ones that know that have a global reach a global audience have been cashing in on this ufc and i know that we bring it up here a lot but the fact remains that as it stands right now, UFC in terms of delivering content to it's a, a big, worldwide a big reason for their sale yeah. is because they've been pushed this content the past year. They yeah. do online exclusives. Yeah, they, they, they do. Have a, they have a good. App I don't know if F one needs this, but they do reality shows. They do well, they're fan pumping. content. They're just something pumping like the content show. like Chris. Just yeah, like you said, go on their go on their uh, um, YouTube channel and like it's like almost like every every couple every minutes. Every few hours. Yeah, they're they're pulling out twenty four seven every few hours so every day. They have if something. if we say that if the UFC is maybe making the best out of cashing in on the cord cutters and on the people out there that just simply have either uh, no money or no time or no uh, or no desire, not necessarily like, and, and this is where people go wrong. It doesn't like cord cutters out there. It's not because they can't afford TV. It's because simply cable TV has ceased to be an attractive alternative for them. Mm hmm you know what i mean it's 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 not that like that and yes there are some people out there that just can't afford it, uh normal cable tv and because of that uh they just choose to pay for what they can and care for uh they can't watch and care for but negating that, that part of the population well, a la carte yeah but negating that part of the population is it's not only like wrong if you want to expand your fan base but it's also yeah. plain stupid from a business point of view because this is a sector of the population that now is has gone from just being um, a minority to now being a visible minority. And mm -hmm. it's actually growing and growing and growing all the time. Now, if one can't, and, and this is our argument, that if one cannot fully extract the maximum benefit of the cord cutters right now or mm -hmm. like the people that are in these kind of situations mm -hmm. because of their the way that their content distribution works if f1 relies they give all their the digital distribution rights to the national broadcasters mm -hmm. that and the national broadcasters they bargain with fom about how much uh everybody should be paying for and then based on that uh, if you like live in a sh in, in a country with a low f1 demand then 
like Canada, for example, then your options are limited. Either uh, the national broadcasters, even even though like you know they know that there's like such a few, like such a low demand, then they just either don't produce their their own content at all and just uh, feed off of. Uh, whatever like other like language or the same language broadcast like and so in our case in tsn uh tsn our national broadcaster that does f1 we get the sky yeah we get the sky f1 feed but to make it worth it for them they throw in a bunch of commercials that ruin the uh, ruin the, the the watching experience during the race yeah, yeah. The, during the race like if, if, if sky doesn't do it they do it how do you solve this how do you mm. and, and this is what we're trying to tackle so what it would what be better at every sport it would be better if there was a centralized now what that looks like and what that costs at this point is almost irrelevant we arrived at the figure of 10 bucks a month or like thereabouts because it could make sense to explore that it's number a not in a weekend yeah not it just rolls off the tongue yeah it's but, a good slogan not even meaning that like that's gonna be that's gonna have to be it but let's say let's start with that let's start with that idea mm -hmm. let's 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 just just by talking about this, we're exposing the big flaw and the fact that nothing like this exists in like in the common sense and cannot in the current yeah. sense, uh, in, in the current like mess of uh, contracts that F1 has with the independent uh, uh, broadcasters. broadcasters. Yeah. It cannot exist. A globally accessible, good quality F1 coverage that is really what every fan out there mm -hmm. is looking for and, and new fans as well as um, as veterans of the sport this cannot happen and it can and it, and it has nothing to do like so let's uh, when we posted one of the threads that it, it had a fantastic response honestly th thank you for everybody that participated uh, so one of the questions or one, one of the things was but I'm already paying you know 30 bucks or 30 euro to like my local provider and I'm not getting like just F1 I'm getting like this 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 and this and this so why would I pay like 10 bucks a week uh, a race yeah I think a lot of what, what we're really talking about is something like this are they seeing this right now yeah this is a little mock-up of what 10 a weekend could really look like like an FOM produced or FOM licensed streaming service worldwide where you can get something like this on the same screen you see the regular world feed in the top corner you get the onboard feed simultaneously you've got the helicopter feed below that you've got the full timing tire data as it pit, happens pit stops people's positions <clears throat> beside that you've got a 3d track map with gps dots of the vehicles driving around beside that you've got commentary and radio news during the race that's popping up beside that selectable driver data here we've got lewis hamilton his tires his g-forces his speed his braking his acceleration his fastest lap but more that we're talking about a multi-screen experience where this is, you could also pick to have just the world feed with the good commentary like whatever you want yeah like uh, up at the front yeah any any of these things or to have this going in in, in your big screen and then have your tablet mm -hmm. with like either the rest of the stuff or like let's say timing and the map showing it right. being shown to you I, I think the idea you're trying to get across is that like you'd be able to you should be able to customize this to, exactly. to how you want it to how yeah. you want yeah. to view f1 a lot of people on our thread posted back like oh what do you think this is it's sunday i just want to ch chill out and watch the race a lot of people don't a lot of people love this last week at betty's the mm -hmm. last race we threw up we had the race simultaneously with the onboard feed yeah and yeah people, people were into that like it's you, and the well, thing is this doesn't stop down. you yeah this doesn't stop you from just enjoying the race you can yeah. just watch, and it's watch just, it with the honestly feet. it's it. it's more data and the more data that you can have it at one point when you become a fan of f1 um you start like like this will enrich your experience right Not and and for tsn let's just bring it back to like say canada yep. so for tsn to invest and actually have something like this available on offer it wouldn't be reasonable. Yeah. It wouldn't be reasonable because it, there's just, like it shouldn't be unreasonable because they should no. be able to license the data streams from. No, 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 no. It has to be separate. Like, and this is the point, man. It has to be an offer. This ideally is what the F1 app that you can get 
uh, should be able to do. And this yeah. is what we're talking about. The F1 app right now that you can get from the from the Play Store and Google, uh, the Google Play Store or the Apple Store should be able to do this. But Honestly, that's what, I, that's what I thought it was going to do. But I, No, it can't. Yeah. There's no way that it can do that. They'll yeah. get into all kinds of legal trouble. And that's why yeah. those contracts have to be broken. Mm-hmm. They have to be renegotiated. Like and this is why this, this conversation isn't gonna happen regionally. That TSN and NBC, no, and nobody's Sky Sports and what yeah. are and Global Sports and if anything, right now the Brits, the Brits have it better than anybody else, yeah. and they, they, yeah, they'd have no need for this if they have like Sky mm-hmm. or whatever, because this something like this is on offer for them right now. Check right. It, check this out though for the Brits next year. Sky is promising 4K coverage of every race. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be a hundred fourteen. Pounds forty pence a month. Yeah, that's insane. It doesn't have to it's be not because ten a weekend. That's a hundred and fifty bucks a month. Yeah, but but now and and here's our Before point. Here's pre-Brexit our Brexit numbers. But but here's our point, man. If you then instead of doing that, make a good quality like Sky F1 level quality accessible around the world for the entire um, like in- Anglosphere. And even beyond, and you know that it's, you know that a good quality English stream, for example, would go beyond borders, mm-hmm. would go beyond like just Language. the Anglosphere. Yeah. Like, like it, we're we're talking about people, speak people, English. people from people Everyone. from Canada, just like seeing this at the same time as people in India, as people in Norway, for example, where and and Germany, where there's like a lot of English penetration, mm-hmm. a lot uh, people in just other third world countries, like because at one point, like if you're if you live in a third world country and you want to like advance in life, you you learn to speak English. That's just the de facto. Uh, world language pretty much right now so you'd be able to have access to this you'd pay your 10 bucks a raise and instead of like having to extract a hundred bucks a month from a select number of brits if you just do 10 bucks a raise to the world at large you're gonna make more money like there's there's just yeah. there's no way around it yeah like it, it is gonna happen you, it'll work and if they were to go with this even like considering they are late to the game yeah you're building that infrastructure for the future for future growth for future growth to and get to co- to get to get to continents like africa mm-hmm. right now if you want to like watch it f1 and anywhere in africa you're you're basically like asking for people to invest a lot of money that they don't have mm-hmm. on expensive cable packages mm. whereas this could just open it to like the random f1 fa- yeah man yeah and this and this also like helps people get into F one and Abs- like absolutely. I had like I, I for people who are just starting into the podcast. These guys both asked me to start this podcast with them, and I told them I had nothing. I knew nothing about Formula One at all, zero <laughs> yeah. zip. Like I knew Vettel, Schumacher, uh, the color red, and that was it. Like in in speed and tires. Like I knew those concepts. And it's taken me a year and a half to learn this sport. But if I had something like this, I would understand it so much more quickly. Yeah, and that's what the sure. sport's about. It's, man. it's it's yeah, it's about it's complicated. About, it's a ballerina dance. It's a, a menage of things. But now, okay, now, no, uh, okay. So you let's say, okay, let's say in many respects, if you were just a lone person out there from the internet mm-hmm. trying to get into F one versus like your own personal situation yeah you might have had it easy precisely yeah. because you had us to like walk you through this but if you were out there on your own left your own devices and just decided like one day out of like an arc of curiosity um you, you to check out a race i'm gonna like, check it out like Bill you, Burr? you'd probably like you so you tune to tsn check out like see like a hundred commercials and then you'd probably like not even understand what's going on yeah. you'd be so put off yeah. by like the, the the cuts in and out like in, in, in like mid-sentence of the commentary that your chances of checking f1 again yeah. might be like way lower than in ca- instead of that if you just all right i'm gonna pay 10 bucks this weekend check it out you mm-hmm. have access to the whole coverage start to finish no commercial interruptions mm-hmm. Watch the race. You probably be like, "Holy shit, this is bad. cool!" And then, and then, what do you do? Then, then your curiosity is already peaked, yeah. and you want to find out more. So instead of waiting for the next race, since you have the pass still to watch um, on-demand content from before, you go and pull up, put up, put yeah. another race. Oh, what happened? What happened in the previous race? Yeah, I want to see you, what happened with that weird qualifying they were yeah, talking about. Yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna watch Australia. And there you go. Yeah, you Boom. need archive access. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Like this, this will only enrich every fan's experience new and old and enrich literally 
The FOM. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the thing that boggles my mind, man. He's, he's, We're talking about, like, them doing something here that would not only, like, make fa like fans' lives easier, it would actually enrich their coffers. Mm -hmm. Why aren't, why isn't this being talked about, man? Yeah, I, th I was under the assumption that they liked money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I'm just being silly. Maybe I'm just being silly. Another big argument against for the... 10 a weekend campaign was yeah. oh, why would I pay $10 a weekend or 10 pounds yeah, a weekend I only care about the race a weekend. Well, this I could, only this care about the race listen NASCAR right now and a lot of people say like what I put together here this mock up of what the 10 a weekend interface could look like this photo I'll post this on Twitter or whatever after you can see it if this wasn't worth 10 bucks a weekend to somebody the, the older fan the seasoned fan who just wants to sit on the couch and relax. NASCAR, a, competitor, a competing sport, offers something called the NASCAR Scanner. This is $3 a month or $15 a season, US dollars. Gives you access to driver info, spotters, whatever that is for NASCAR, yeah. and chief info. They're, t they're like the team principal data. You can get that for three bucks a race, 15 bucks a weekend. For the more hardcore fans, so hang on a fan, second, because you said you said three bucks a month or fifteen bucks a season. A season, yeah. So okay, so it's it's a season, not a race. Okay, sorry, per, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, per, per season, but they offer for the more hardcore fan who might want something like this, like the ten a weekend. And there's no reason F1 can't tier their access. Get, That's it. Give you some driver access and some and the race. And if you want all the other shit, you pay more. What NASCAR gives you for eight dollars a month, or for forty five dollars a season is full stats leaderboard info audio for the radios yeah. 3d 3d track and pit lane camera and onboard cameras selectable and you can actually watch like we have mocked up here mm -hmm. as many of those simultaneously as you can fit on your screen or your internet can handle yeah as many as you want to watch you can pull up your phone as well there's no reason F1 can't be yeah, doing this. Yeah. So if you if all you want to pay for is five bucks a, a race weekend or just five bucks a race to just watch the race, there's a, this. Why can't this, this platform? Do that? There's no, no reason. Here's the thing. This platform would would allow you that. Like it would allow that yeah. flexibility. It would allow people to customize their experience, and from that you can build. This is the thing. From the, from something like this, once an offering. To, of this level is available you can build on it huge you can add features you can add languages you can add support for all kinds of things that before just wasn't available and you'll do that on demand mm -hmm. so people so let's say people not just not just the f1 fans of britain or the f1 fans of uh um you know x or y country no the people of the world are asking for this feature, mm -hmm. so you invest, you, you 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 look at the numbers, and all of a sudden, something that wasn't worth investing if it was only going to be uh, sold uh, to a hundred thousand people, mm -hmm. if instead we're talking about a few million people, all of a sudden it makes sense. All of a sudden Ooh. it's Ooh. worth investing. Ooh. So this this is what we're talking about. If you look at in in quotes, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong here, the Formula E feature of F one, whatever, whatever. They offer their service completely free. Mm -hmm. All of that is free on YouTube. But if we're being like, it's, it sounds nice and mm -hmm. whatever, utopian, but really Formula E is not even where Formula One was in 1950. Yeah. Right now. They're, they're offering that for free. And the, the IndyCar, we went down, we were saying we went down to the Toronto race this weekend on YouTube, offers the, the race was not available online for, for free. But on YouTube, they showed the entire Friday of the circuit, all the below series yeah, and all, the, all the support practice, races. Yeah, the, their equivalent of the FP1 and FP2 on the Friday. There's no reason, even well, there's reasons. The Concord Agreement and broadcaster deals and all all that exclusivity. But there shouldn't be a reason that Formula One's not showing the free practice sessions and maybe even the qualifying. Maybe not the qualifying. That's that's a business decision, but. All the free practice, the, the, not the, available. All, all the all the other side stuff that happens with F one, the press conferences, the press, the press conferences, everything, man. X content, content is key. And the to, yeah. do like you, wake the up. UFC is showing you the wake up press this. conferences. For this free. is the real, like this is reality right now. Content mm -hmm. is king. You gotta be putting out 
this kind of content all, yeah, all the time. Twenty four seven. The earth, the earth yeah. doesn't stop spinning. Yeah, yeah Some, half it. of it is always lit up. Yeah, yeah. All right, I think with the, with those words, uh, we can <laughs> DJ play us out. Yeah, I think so. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for sticking around. I, th- I know that some of you are still watching. Sorry about the glitches that we had last week. Mix your own down for us. Two parts Heineken, one part Red Bull. If you get a 500 mil Heineken can, 250 mil Red Bull can, you can get your set. Two 12 ounce set glasses, solo cup. Um, get your two shit. plus one equals down for us. Jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all jacked up right thanks now. Thanks for listening. Cheers.